from Blue Devils football. This is Green Castle Antrim Blue Devils football on midpenbroadcasting.com. This is a production of midpenbroadcasting.com, where over 70 local sporting events a year stream live to your PC, laptop, phone, and tablet. Tonight's Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils game is brought to you by f and Trust. They're in the community and 100% local. Come to the right place for local banking. Member FDIC. Antrim Insurance, your local Erie insurance agent. Waste management, environmentally friendly technologies, and advanced innovations. Remax Premier Executives Agent Lois Baer. Del Martin Incorporated, a full-service advertising agency serving the tri-state area for 35 years. Lecron Comfort Solutions, serving all of Franklin County with professional service and installation. Brothers Pizza Dine-In, carry out and delivery. 50 Pine Drive, Greencastle. Klein Tours, New York City, Atlantic City, and more. Visit kleintours.net for complete tour schedule. Now, with the play-by-play, -play, here's Greg Hoover and Mike Montadoro. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to beautiful Cayley Field on the Greencastle Antrim Athletic Complex for tonight's game between the visiting and resurgent Indians of Waynesboro and the Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils. Tonight's pregame show brought to you by Antrim Insurance, your local area insurance agent serving Greencastle, Waynesboro, Chambersburg, Mercersburg, and surrounding areas. Antrim Insurance, 169 South Antrimway, Greencastle, and 1685 East Main Street, Waynesboro. Hi again, everyone. I'm Greg Hoover, and tonight, returning from a, a well-deserved two-day vacation, one-day, one-game break, from me anyway, Mike Montador. And in the grand th scheme of things, you cannot ask for a bigger game for both teams and communities than the one that stands in front of us tonight. The winner of tonight's game is the driver is in the driver's seat for a piece of the mid ped Colonial Division title, is in the driver's seat for a postseason contest by qualifying for districts, and the winner, and this may be the most important part of the two others combined, the winner gets bragging rights for a whole year. Jam packed stadium tonight, Mike. It is what it is. Waynesboro and Greencastle. Yeah, what a great night. And, and as we said earlier in the year, we love it when the teams are all better makes everyone better, makes things more fun. What an amazing night tonight. The temperature is perfect for a fall high school football game. Waynesboro coming in off a couple of big wins. They're kind of rolling in here. Greencastle got back on a winning track against Northern. So tonight, uh, just going to be an exciting night. It, it sure is. A, a cool, calm 62 degrees right now. The wind barely blowing in uh, in the stadium tonight. As you get a view of the stadium, you can probably see the uh, crowds from both sides. We anticipated a big crowd here tonight, despite the fact the Halloween parade's in town to really just confuse Route 16 totally. But uh, again, Again, Waynesboro, when you win, they travel out, and, and who can blame them? We talked a little, we'll talk a little bit more about Waynesboro, but we want to first talk about Greencastle, Antrim, and as you said, picking up a big win against Northern last week, and I know you weren't at the ball game, but uh, the, the Blue Devils just played well. They did things they had to do, as you always say, and, and it was interesting because Vern had three keys to the game. We didn't get on in time for him to give the three keys. <laughs> <laughs> I missed my chief engineer, I must tell you, and, and, and uh, my producer. However, uh, uh, as we got on, and at the end of the ball game, when he went over those three keys, is exactly what the Blue Devils did. They limit penalties. They, you know, they they took away. Uh, obviously, you know, they didn't get the big plays that they had before, and just a great game for them. However, coming into tonight's ball game, boy, the injury bug has really bitten Greencastle hard, perhaps harder than any other year I can remember in recent history. Yeah, and it, each week, and it, it's not taking out, you know, it's not taking out a kid that you could re easily replace. It's, it's been taking out kids each week that are big contributors on this club. So uh, tonight is going to be a night that, you know, they're, they're going to have to, some guys are going to have to step up and play, and hopefully they're prepared for this. Well, Randy Harn, who the backup center, is out and defensive player. Tyler Graham injured his uh, neck again. He is out. And this just happened today. Graham Hurst, who's one of the uh, mainstays in that secondary, had emergency epidemic appendix operation <laughs> right, right, right. you can't you can't say resurgence early in the game use a word that big and then and come, come back, back with an apodectomy. apodectomy no you can't do it you can't do you're not allowed to do both of those in the same <laughs> no. in the same segment but nevertheless we wish him well but he's not here tonight and i tell you what it's the secondary we worry about it is a secondary we worry about tonight we worry about the speed in which this waynesboro team plays not not their speed down the field but how quickly they snap the ball 
So they get out there, they try to run a play about every 15 to 17 seconds, and, and that's going to keep you on your toes. It will. Uh, but besides that, you, you guys are going to get winded. And when you've got some guys out there that, one, haven't played a lot, and then you got to put in their substitutes because they're winded. Now you're down to threes and fours, and I don't know threes and fours match up well against Waynesboro. Well, you know, we talked about how they play, the speed they play. They've been averaging around 70 to 80 plays a game, and that's just uh, that's just a lot of plays. And, of course, you know, it's real easy. We can talk about what Greencastle has to do. The keys are simple. You, you just move the sticks. You know, Greencastle doesn't even want the big plays. Right. They want to just take time off the clock, one of those six, seven-minute drives, yes. let them come back, get the ball back, and six, seven-minute drives, that's the way it is. So it really, really should be a go. We'll talk a little bit about those uh, Indians when we come back and when we return on the Antrim Insurance pregame show uh, right here on FNM Trust Sports Network and midpenbroadcasting.com and in gametimepa.com. Hello. Okay, people, here's your chance to come clean. Been okay. punished? What did you do? I backed into a tree. Oh, I got dinged at the mall. I hit black ice, then a parked car. And your punishment was? They, they raised my, my auto, auto premium. premium. Here's how to stop the punishment. Get Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. With Rate Lock, you'll get a low rate that stays low, even if you file a claim. You're locked in until you change cars, drivers, or your address. Oh. Which means when you call on us, you'll feel like you're supposed to feel relieved. For complete details or to get a seriously good quote, call Antrim Insurance. In Greencastle, call 593-0500. In Waynesboro, call 762-4565. See for yourself why more than 90% of Erie customers stay with Erie. Rate lock is not guaranteed continued insurance coverage. Insured must meet necessary underwriting guidelines. Premium may change if you make policy changes. Not all products are offered in all states. Patent pending. It's home equity season at FNM Trust. The best time of year to rake in big savings with some of the best rates around on a home equity loan or line of credit. To rake in your savings during home equity season, visit fmtrustonline.com. Equal housing lender. Every day, Fast Signs helps businesses with their visual communications. We ask the right questions, recommend smart solutions, and help you build your business. At Fast Signs, we're innovators, planners, and designers, and we're more than ready to help. Contact Fast Signs today. Visit www.fastsides.com or visit us at our Greencastle and York locations. Brothers Pizza is a proud supporter of the Greencastle Blue Devils. Brothers Pizza offers a full menu and breakfast is served seven days a week. Don't forget Brothers Pizza for your next football party or special event. Our menu selection is great for football parties, birthdays, and other special occasions. Dine in, carry out, and delivery. 50 Pine Drive, Greencastle, next door to Comfort Inn. Phone 597-5322 or order online at mybrospizza.com. Live and local, this is midpenbroadcasting.com. Live and local. This is MidPenBroadcasting.com. Welcome back to Kelly Field. The Star Spangled Banner being played by a uh, member of the Greencastle Hunter High School Blue Devil Marching Band, Hunter Tedrick, on a trumpet solo. Wonderful job. The band, by the way, marching in the Halloween parade is tradition. They'll be here for uh, to assist here. With the ball game. So they just left Hunter here? <laughs> they said, Hunter, you stay, do that. We can do the parade without you, man. <laughs> we <laughs> just need one. We just that's need, all we need. Yeah, that's all we need. We didn't know. And, and we did a great, he did a great job with that. Uh, Waynesboro Band will be performing at halftime. Beautiful night for football. We stated that before. Indians coming onto the field. They'll be wearing their away whites and their royal blue bottoms and gold helmets. And then you have the Blue Devils, of course, will be wearing the home blues tonight. Uh, we talked a little bit about this Waynesboro team. They're, they're upbeat. They're fast. They like to get things going. They are an exciting team. And here's what we found out over the past couple of weeks. I've heard it from you. I've heard it from Coach Taninis. They're a well-coached ball club. Yeah, they very they very well are, and, and very much so. I saw them early in the year at Fairfield at a scrimmage, and I thought, wow, these guys look good out there. They flat backs. They fire off the ball. Uh, they look like they're well-coached. And each week as, as we go out there, they're doing other things. If they can limit their mistakes tonight, you know, and that's one thing uh, Connor Fedorov is, is crushing 
the Franklin County mid pen region down here with passing yards. I think he has like 1,700 passing yards, but he also has a lot of picks. Well, here's the deal. He's 97 to 192, 50%, 17, 1,786 yards. He has thrown 14 touchdowns, 18 interceptions, and per pass, 18.4. But here's the deal. Every 14 passes is a touchdown, but every 10 pass is an interception. So yep. can the Blue Devils secondary, as we talked about before, can they hold down the speed? And that's what Chuck talked about today when we sat down at lunch. You know, he says, i, I got to be honest, I'm worried about their speed on the outside, and, and so is everybody else, and that they do. Heck, Mac Pack, who uh, is a junior, comes in with, uh, depending on which stat you look at, 780 yards or 818 yards with only 31 receptions. So, boy, and, and then don't forget Justin Marion, who is the uh, senior running back, coach's brother, he has 979 yards rushing, 462 receiving, 1,441 yards. That's a pretty impressive season right there. Yeah, and offensively, they're doing those kinds of things. But you said it. the one thing I talked to the ship guys, because Shippensburg beat Waynesboro, and I talked to them this week, and I said, hey, you know, what'd you do? How'd you do this? And, and what they told me was we set our safety back at 20 yards. We backed our corners off at about 14, and we said, catch it in front of us. We'll tackle you. We don't think you can go the length of the field without making a mistake. That's a great and, point. And we'll 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 let you get eight. We'll let you get seven. We'll let, but eventually you're going to make that mistake. Fedorov's going to throw that pick, or something bad's going to happen, and we're just going to outpatient you if that's you know if that's the way you want to look at it. And it worked for them. Plus, they told me it was also a rainy well, night. I was going to say that, that and, might that might help. It right? was a rainy night. So, and, and that'll be interesting to see how Greencastle does and how they defend this spread offense. Because listen, we know JB came in here. They went five wides, put Shamar Pates back there, and they gashed us and, and got themselves back into a foot. They were down yeah. in this game badly. They got right back in the game and had a chance. They got the onside kick with a, with a few minutes to go. They had a chance to tie it up or, or whatever. But that's something I think that you really got to be concerned about. Hershey did it to Greencastle. JB did it to Greencastle. East Penn did it to Greencastle. The, the blueprint's out there. It is. It and, is. And you got to hope that you were able to correct that this week. And without Graham Hurst tonight, I, I think that is going to be a huge blow in this game. Well, not only has did we lose Graham Hurst, but previous to that, uh, Kyle Peck, who played defensive end, and, and, and part of the positions that, you know, the defensive end guards, some people as they go, we lost him. And, you know, it just mounts up. It's just, uh, it's just an incredible amount of injuries to key people, not – you know, not necessarily abnormal injuries. Who could expect uh, the appendix to burst right. today? You know, those types of things. Yeah, and, like and, tomorrow would yeah, be fun. We, if you could have planned <laughs> it, uh, you know, we would have, you know, Graham, if you could have thought about it a little bit, tomorrow would have been okay. But, you know, those things don't happen. Tonight's uh, pregame show has been brought to you by Antrim Insurance, your local we area insurance agent serving Greencastle, Waynesboro, Chambersburg, Mercersburg, and surrounding areas. Antrim Insurance, 169 South Antrim Way, Greencastle, and 1685 East Main Street in Waynesboro. Well, you see the captains meeting at the center of the field. Greencastle's won the toss, and once again, will get the ball to start the ball game out. They will defend the west, and Waynesboro will come from, their, from the east from their home in Waynesboro and move the ball right to left when they go on off. Offense. Stage is set, guys. Nothing else to add to this one. Beautiful night. The field looks beautiful. Packed house here. Extra bleachers over for Waynesboro in case they decide to bring the rest of the town down. It's here, you know. <laughs> and uh, and I tell you, it, it is uh, electric atmosphere. You, we can feel it high up here in the box. Yeah, I'm real excited about this thing right now. Both teams came out of the gate real excited, real enthused. That's the thing you wanted to worry about, too, is make sure – Make sure the Blue Devils didn't come out flat, and they did not. They came out. They looked ready to go. I, I'm I'm excited about them selecting offense here. You know, I'm excited about them winning the toss and not deferring right. and saying, give us a ball because we think we can run it down the field and stick one in. Uh, you know, had the had the been reversed, if Waynesboro gets out to a fast start, then wow. You, you know, I mean, you don't want Waynesboro to get the ball and go right down the field. So this maybe gets you settled into the game a little bit, see how you match up up front. Dylan Cummins setting the ball up. As we mentioned, they will move from their uh, right to left on your computer screen, moving from east to west. Cummings is a 5'11", uh, see here, 5'11", sophomore, weighing 173 pounds. So let's see what happens here with the opening kickoff and the opening drive. Don't kick is straight back up in the air. Going to be taken at the 20-yard line. It looks like... The ball is taken by 
Who was that? Burns? Yes. Yeah. Joe Burns with the uh, carry, and he brings it up to the 20, uh, 32 yard line, first and 10 for the Blue Devils. I was excited about that. I thought, well, maybe Coach had been watching film. He's going to kick it right there to the 30, yeah. let it roll around, see what, what comes up. But they decide to kick it deep, and at Green Castle, pretty good starting field position. It is. Blue Devils will split uh, two to the near side of the field. Actually, three to this near side as they work from the left hash mark, left to right. Spencer Myers under center with a lone setback in the back. He's going to get the call. Straight up the middle he goes, and he gets about four yards on the play. Matthew Overholzer at the fullback position and a gain of four. Yeah, come right out. Spread the field, run the guard trap. All of a sudden, Greencastle. And the beautiful thing about football is just a copycat. You know, you steal plays from other guys. No one reinvents plays. You just steal them from other teams you see. And spread it out, run the guard trap, see what you get. Pick up five on first down. you got to love it. Second and six. Hanson to our near side here. Sprague in the slot to the left. Play action. Myers looking to throw. Fires and completes it out here to Overholzer again. And it is going to be a first down Blue Devils. Yeah, ran the waggle action. Slipped the fullback out underneath. That's the kind of stuff that I like to see out of the Blue Devils. The flood route, the little waggle route. Get that little fullback out in the flat. Get them the ball first down and keep the chains moving. And more importantly, run the clock. Run Short, the clock. Shorten this game tonight. That's the key. Whiteouts both sides of the field now. They switch to the right hash mark. Myers, the handoff will go to Hines, and Hines is thrown for a loss back at the 40-yard line. He just came out, tried to run their little power sweep action, and uh, too much penetration inside. They pulled the guards. 52 did a real nice job for Waynesboro, getting up the field, getting penetration, cutting the guard off, and making a play. Here's an interesting statistic. 4.7 sacks a game the Waynesboro defense has been getting. Pretty impressive. Everybody in tight now in this Greencastle alignment. They'll send uh, Sprague in motion trying to get him Got to it. the outside. He did get to the outside to the 45 to the 50 and knocked out of bounds for a first down across the, into Waynesboro territory at the 48-yard line. Yeah, nice job. They were able to get the corner on the jet sweep, and, and you can see it set up right here. The blocks were in place. Everything went. I was not real impressed with Waynesboro physicalness out here. I, some guys got blocked somewhat pretty easily, and 23 sat back at 15 yards to make a tackle. So that's something to watch a little bit later on. Slot to the left is Sprague again, way out on the outside, looking to receiver is Hanson. Play action, rolling left. Myers looking, throws down here to Sprague, makes the completion at the 35-yard line for another Blue Devil first down. Run the same waggle play before. That time over, Overholzer is covered, but Sprague's open a little deeper route, that middle route. Gets it to Sprague for the first down. Good thing Samuel held on to that. Gets him. He had a hand in there with it, but he was able to hold the ball. So, again, clock's moving. Sticks are moving. Shorten the game. 9.53 here in the first quarter. Clock ticking down. No score. Greencastle first offensive possession. Motion comes break. He gets the ball. They're going to run that end around again. He gets the corner. Cuts up field a little bit to the 30. Still on his feet. Down to the 20. Still running. And run out of bounds inside the 15. Down to the 14-yard line. Yeah, if you figured they were going to come back to it soon, they're getting the corner on that jet sweep. And, and quite honestly, Waynesboro right here, not real physical coming up and making plays. So, uh, so they're doing they're doing a nice job. Don't be surprised if you don't see jet sweep to the left here shortly. That is three consecutive first downs for the Blue Devils. Break accounts for two of them here. Hanson to the near side at the 15-yard line. Oberholzer, Hine in the backfield for the Blue Devil. And play action. Stops, throws, has a man wide open. Touchdown, Stolliber. Myers to Stolliber for the Greencastle touchdown. How about that drive Myers put together with the waggle action? One to Oberholzer, one to Sprague, one to Stolliber. Hit all three receivers and doing a nice job showing how this offense is supposed to work. That may be the best offensive series I've seen in Greencastle. I'm going to tell you, Greg, probably four years. I, I, I would have to agree. That was just slick. Even though they did get the one loss play in here, mattered not. Hanson coming in to uh, attempt to make it a seven-point spread here early on in the ball game. Snap is there. Kick is, is down. The kick is up. It, it goes to the uprights. 9-27. It was a patent Greencastle drive. They score first. They lead this one. 7-0. We'll be back on the FNM Trust Sports Network on midpenbroadcasting.com and gametimepa.com. It's home equity season at FNM Trust. The best time of year to rake in big savings with some of the best rates around on a home equity loan or line of credit. 
To rake in your savings during home equity season, visit fmtrustonline.com. Equal housing lender. Chalk Talk. We talk high school football every Thursday night at 7.30 on midpenbroadcasting.com. Welcome back. That was a seven-play, 68-yard drive, and the kick was good, 7-0. Blue Devils taking approximately two and a half minutes on that drive off the clock. And, Mike, you got to say, sort of just what the doctor ordered, huh? It was exactly what the doctor ordered. What a great start for the Blue Devils to come out and just kind of dominate play right there and did everything they wanted to do. A couple different formations. We haven't seen the waggle pass in a while, so good for them. Hanson, squib kick. Going to take a roll and picked up at the 20-yard line. Trying to be brought back upfield and brought down at the 30-yard line. Waynesboro's first possession there. First and 10 from the 30 on their own territory. Anthony Dunnigan. Dunnigan credit with the stop. Now we get a chance to see this up-tempo, no-huddle offense of Coach Brennan Marion in his first year here at Waynesboro. He has turned the tide for him. They ran into somewhat of a, a, a bad second and third week, but since that time, except for the Shippensburg loss, they have been playing pretty good football. Connor under center, three, two, four to the left, straight back in the pocket, looking to pass. Has some time, fires down here for the intended receiver, caught at the 45, and down the sideline he goes. That is Matt Peck, and right away, the score, they score right away. Yeah, just, right away. Just ran a corner route. Uh, her, Hansen got caught inside. The ball was out, and Peck just separated from Hansen. Separated, got his hands on the ball, caught it, and went. And that's got to be, that's not what you want to happen. Ooh. Not after the drive you put together, you can't let them score one play like that. Well, that's simple. 70 yard pass play, and another touchdown for both Connor Fetterhoff and Matt Peck. Peck has a, had 11 of the 14 touchdown passes, now he has 12 of the 15. Cummings back in to kick the extra point. It is up, and it is good. As quickly as they got the ball back, they have scored. It's tied at 7 apiece. 9-11 to go in the first quarter right here on the FNM Trust Sports Network on midpenbroadcasting.com and gametimepa.com. Hey, insurance companies that want to spend a gazillion dollars on funny TV ads can go right ahead, as long as it's not my money paying for it. For seriously good auto, home, business, or life insurance, I go to Erie Insurance where a great price is just the start. You get unbelievable service, independent agents you can really trust, and superior products. But don't just take it from me. Talk to your local Erie agent. Call Antrim Insurance. In Greencastle, call 593-0500. In Waynesboro, call 762-4565. This is Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils football on midpenbroadcasting.com. Well, you know, 233 it took the Blue Devils to score in that drive. 16 seconds for the Waynesboro Indians to come back with it. It's, hey, it's just what everybody said. Greencastle will run the ball, and Waynesboro will throw the ball. And they did. And they certainly did. Quickly. Cummings kickoff. Got underneath it this time. Going to go floating back to the 10-yard line. Blue Devil has it. Coming up the field and knocked down at the 28-yard line. Well, that's if you're the Blue Devils. That's not what you want. You didn't want to let them inject life in one play. You wanted to kind of work for their scores. And so that did not turn out well. A little bit on that. Fedorov had way too much time too much to throw time. the ball. And the defensive backs aren't playing deep enough in the field. He's got to be behind that. That's got to, you got to play deep thirds if you're playing zone back here. Even if you're playing man, you you got to get down the field with these guys. I was really surprised how much time he had. I thought that would be one of the things that the Blue Devils could do is put pressure on Federhoff, but not that case. First one is it's just the belly up the middle overhauler. It's the fullback position up to the 32. Gets two, three yards on the play. Or five. Or four. Hey. Yeah, picks yeah. up four on the guard trap. That's just how they started the last drive. Different formation that time, but they think they can run the guard trap inside. And that's something that Shippensburg told me this week. They thought, you know, hey, they were big inside. They didn't think they'd be able to try them, but then they did and thought, well, hey, they can be trapped inside. So I'm sure Greencastle picked up on that as well. I formation, Blue Devils in the backfield, going to give it to the tailback, Hines. Hines breaks through, has a little running room as he comes straight up the middle, still moving his feet, and he gets up to the 45-yard line and a Blue Devil first down. Yeah, James Hines, man, there aren't many guys that run harder than James Hines. He keeps those feet moving, 
he does what he has to do. Were they in the eye formation there? They were in the eye formation. The first time, it wasn't a broken eye. I was thinking it might be. It was an eye formation. It was an eye formation. I they're running the isolation plays, man. You got to love this. Hey. I mean, they pulled out all the stops tonight. They did. I haven't called eye formation for the Blue Devils in a well, ever, you know. <laughs> uh, let's be honest. Uh, wing T right now, two wings, wing and a slot and a receiver, and one setback. Faking it to Hines, throwing down here for Oberholzer, just a little bit overthrown, and the first incomplete pass of the night for either team, and for Myers, who's three of four. Dakota Ryan just bailed at the DN spot up there. He bailed fast to try to get underneath that throw to Oberholzer, almost got underneath it for the pick. If they're going to do that, then you just get Myers to run up behind him on the corner. If they're going to take these outside backer, if you're going to take that outside backer and, and, and try to run underneath people, then just run the corner if you have it and Myers had the corner. So, Silva's the wide out now on to our near side of the field. They'll work from the center of the field. Two in the backfield and a slot. Going to go in that counter crisscross with Sprague. Sprague has some running room up over the 50 into the Indian territory. Down at about the 49, 48-yard line. Six-yard pickup on the second down. Yeah, great job by Sam on the counter crisscross. Again, I think they can be trapped. Ship said they can be trapped. They, uh, they've been trapped a couple times tonight. Uh, so good call there. Nice try and a big pickup. Third down and about one, two, three, four to go. 731 here in the first quarter. Just joining us, you missed a lot of fireworks. Blue Devils moved down the field in the first drive and then uh, and scored, and then Waynesboro countered with one play, a 70-yard pass play to tie it up at seven. Two in the backfield, one to the left. Tight end is to the right side. That is Stoliber. Snap and a handoff goes to Oberholzer. He gets the first. Well, that's oh. going to be close to the first down. Should have a face mask on. There was that, right? a flag. There is a flag sitting at the 40-yard line. In Waynesboro territory, and we're hoping for the, if you're Greencastle, you're hoping for the penalty. Boy, Overhaul's is running well, too, isn't he? He is. There it is, the face mask against the Indians. So that'll be tack definitely a first down, yeah. It'll be tacked on from the spot, and they get a five-yarder, so an unintentional face mask. Unintentional. They almost the all are. The yeah, they, they certainly are. So the ball goes to the 40, first and 10 for the Blue Devils. Sprague in the slot to the right. They'll move Stoliber out at the wide out on the near side of the field. Rolling this way, looking to pass, has some time, throws to Sprague. Nice catch, nice play down at the 25-yard line. Yeah, nice throw, and that's a kind of, that's, you know what, this is the Spencer Myers we saw at the end of last year that we've been waiting to see this year. Like, let's go, let's go. Uh, and here we're seeing here, give Sprague credit for holding on that ball. Again, someone's hands were in there, but Sprague strong enough to hold the football, get down with it. So, hey, Blue Devils doing what they want to do offensively right now and doing some fun stuff offensively. I'm not afraid to say that. Yeah, that is true. Silva to the near side here. Sprague will go in that slot to the right and Stoliber the tight end to the left side again. The I formation, Mike. Spencer under center. And the tailback gets it. That is Hines. Hines still on his feet and moving his feet. Picks up four yards on the play. Yeah, just uh, the it's the wing T belly rocket play, ISO play, but they're putting it out of the I formation because they want to they want to get it deep and give it to a fullback in front to block and uh, they're doing nice things right now. Aren't they all the same plays, just different formations? Different formations, yep. same plays, and it depends on how deep you are when you get the ball. Same offensive alignment as Hein, excuse me, Silva comes this way. Slot right. So in blitz, Waynesboro, but now they're going to roll right. Spencer steps up in the pocket and makes the wise decision to keep it. They're still trying to push him forward. I think I hear a whistle, and it's going to be spotted probably at the same location. Yeah, it looks like he might have picked up one on the play. Maybe. Oh, moving the ball back a little yes. bit. Yes. It's about third and seven now here in the first quarter. 5.24 to go. Blue yeah, Devils with the ball on the 21-yard line. Big third down play for the Blue Devils. I hate to say big so soon. So soon. But but it is. It is. Thank you for concurring with my uh It is a big play because you, oh, you got two downs. I think you got yeah, two I here. Yeah, I think you do, yeah. I got two here. You pick up three or four, you're in good shape. Same alignment, but this time they're going to bring Silva to the left side and keep Sprague on the right side in a wing position. He'll go in motion, 
And he's to the left side. Now let's see if Spencer goes that way, and he does. Looking to throw. Fires for the end zone. Oh, Myers intercepted. Or excuse me, the spring intercepted down at the two-yard line. And he just made, he made a nice play on the ball. I mean, he was behind it. He broke on the ball. Ball had some air on it. You know, that's a that's one in that kind of coverage. You got to throw it on the rope. And, and you know, I mean, Spencer is a good throw. Maybe maybe on the rope it gets in a little bit of air under it. He makes a break on it. But but not a not a bad spot to leave Waynesboro at the two. You would think probably you better hope. better than a punt perhaps because you probably would have punt it out of the end zone or give it up here on fourth down at the 30. Yeah, we can sugarcoat this all we, we want. We can, we can, we, we can. We would still like to have had the football. And, and the touchdown. But but not a bad spot maybe to have Waynesboro pin deep and let them make one of their mistakes. But they've only had one play on offense. So. Yeah, they haven't had a chance to make. It takes 10 plays for them to get a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so Same formation. It is. They Four to right. They're going to just pitch to, to uh, Marion. Marion Barry. Uh, Marion Barry. <laughs> Marion. <laughs> and he comes around the right side. He's wearing number four. They get a first down on the run. So from the Waynesboro two, they start this drive. And, you know, the thing about them, Mike, is they pass and run an equal amount. Now, this is like an eye formation, but from the shotgun, throwing, complete, and uh-oh, Hanson misses it on Peck, but then he gets a shoestring tackle out at the 35-yard line, which saves the touchdown. If you're going to make, if you're going to go for that, you got to make that play. If not, you just let him catch it and you tackle. A couple things that concern me right now is Waynesboro's come out in a few different formations, and Greencastle looks confused in coverage, and that's not good. Two to the right, one to the left, two in the backfield in an eye formation behind out of the shotgun. And they give it to Marion. Marion straight up the middle, has some running room, breaks one, breaks two, and then crosses the 50 at the 48-yard line. There you saw a little bit of Justin Marion's speed. Yeah, Marion's quick when he gets the ball, but, but Waynesboro following the blueprint that's been provided for them. Spread the field out, see if you can't gash the Blue Devils. They're going to move that. I formation more or less with the two backs who are both up backs and give it to the first man through he has some running room breaks one tackle and now brought down after crossing the 40 there that is their numbers are a little messed up here on the program Jake works Jake works the ball carrier on that one first down so the 36 yard line Four straight first downs for Waynesboro. Rolling to the right. Federhoff looking, looking, doesn't have anything, keeps it, runs out of bounds at three yards up on the play. Yeah, you had your, the Greencastle DN on that side made a huge mistake. He had he had two guys blocking him, but instead of fighting it to the outside, he dipped in. And when he dipped in, Federhoff was able to get the corner. So he's got to, even if he's getting blocked, he's got to fight to the sideline. To push him up, yeah. Federhoff, three yards back on the snap. Now straight back, looking to set up. Looks like a screen. It is incomplete and fortunately incomplete. I think Greencastle did a nice job reading that. You saw their D lineman immediately stop in their tracks and turn and try to find the ball. So nice play by Greencastle. This is a big third down for Waynesboro. Yes, it is. I'm guessing they're going to go for it. They got two plays to get this. Yeah, third and seven for the Indians. They're not messing around with formations. Two to the right, one to the left, and two in the backfield. Going to give it to Marion. Marion straight through and picks up the first down. And it took the secondary to bring him down, so he gets to the 25-yard line. It seems like they can do that at will. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it just seems like when they need a yard or two or ten, they just, they'll just they spread it out and, and give it to him there. Fifth first down of the drive out of six plays. They're going to give it to Wurtz this time. Wurtz picks up three or four yards on that carry off the right side. Mike, you know, I, I keep a little running sheet here of plays and such. I brought two tonight, thinking that I would knew. need it. Yeah. Because you knew. They have run seven plays so far in this drive. Blue Devils ran seven plays last time in their in their opening drive, and then seven plays for the interception. Waynesbar gives it to Marion. Marion cuts to the left, comes right back, and runs over Oberholzer, or rather Oberholzer stops him there at about the 16-yard line. Yeah, Waynesboro uh, doing a nice job. And, and you know what's interesting is uh, their offensive linemen get tired too because of this, but but you don't see them drive block much. You see them position block, and all they got to do is hold for a second. 
Going to send one of their backs, Wirtz, out here to the outside, and they're going to throw quickly. Try to get a little screen pass out there. They complete a nice tackle at the 12-yard line, but that's still going to be good enough for the first oh, down. So first down, Luke Kaiga. Did you see them all? Did you see him chop block up front? Everyone chop block straight out. Defensive line went down like they're supposed to, and he got that throw off. So good job by the by the war, or what are the Indians? They are the Indians. That was Devin Marion with the reception. And look at the throw again. Little pressure this time. Thrown for the corner to Peck once again. And touchdown, <laughs> Waynesboro, as Matt Peck brings in the play. Yeah, they're just going after it. They're attacking Kurt Hansen on that corner route. And once he breaks it to the to the corner, to the pylon, Kurt can't keep up with him. And it's a, a well-thrown ball to the outside edge every time. And, and Kurt just can't make that play. So now Waynesboro will try to tackle on the extra point attempt here snap is down place up line drive shot through the goal post and it is good 202 remaining in the opening quarter and the Indians have taken a seven point lead 14-7 on the FNM Trust Sports Network on midpenbroadcasting.com and gametimepa.com Every day, Fast Signs helps businesses with their visual communications. We ask the right questions, recommend smart solutions, and help you build your business. At Fast Signs, we're innovators, planners, and designers, and we're more than ready to help. Contact Fast Signs today. Visit www.fastsides.com or visit us at our Green Castle at York locations. Chuck Tom. We talk high school football every Thursday night at 7.30 on MidPenBroadcasting.com. <laughs> you know, one bad thing about social media is people can text you while you're doing the game. I apologize for the Marion Barry. I don't know where that came from. You know, like the former mayor of Washington, D.C. <laughs> running the football here. Hey, yeah, yeah. And all the illegal things that he did. By the way, that drive, 98 yards on eight plays. Capped off for the second touchdown pass from Federhoff to Peck, and it was a 12-yarder. Greencastle takes the ball in the kickoff at the 18-yard line. Trying to break one through, almost does, does, and he gets tackled down at the 30-yard line. That is a gazette, the ball carrier for the Blue Devils. So Diaz makes the tackle for the Indians. The ball will be spotted at the 35-yard line. Waynesboro with the lead, 14-7. Let's see, Greencastle's got, this is an important drive for them. Yes, it is. Blue Devils, ISO in the back, one back there. Long snap count coming from quarterback Myers. Really long snap count, as long as I've ever seen him make. Well, yeah, that, Greencastle, they moved, they moved three times in that, and, and they only got called for it right there. The center flinched once. The guard rocked in his stance. Uh, so I, I didn't know what they were trying to do there. Yeah, that uh, that was a little confusing from our standpoint. Man, you don't want to do something like that right there, do you? You never want to do anything like that. You're five <laughs> yards behind the sticks. No, you're, you're absolutely right, but but you, you're going. You're, you know what I mean? Yeah. Keep going. Here we go. Handoff straight up the middle. Over uh -oh. also breaks one and now up over the 40 to 45, brought down at the 47 yard line. That works so well. First yeah, down, Blue Devils. They can get that guard trap. They can keep hitting it. And they're going to have to keep hitting it because they got to keep the ball in their hands. Yeah, it's one of those games where I think whoever has it last wins. Well, we don't, we don't know that yet. Well, I know we don't know that yet, but I'm just saying. Hey, yeah, I would like it to be one of those games. Yes. At least that means you're staying in it. That's right. Because that 98-yard drive was pretty impressive. It was at that. 16 yards on the carry for Overholzer. Hanson to the outside now. And Sprague will line up in the wing back position on the right. Two in the backfield. Overholzer and Hines playing there almost exclusively. Hines get the call, and he's going to get sacked for a loss back at the 43-yard line. And that's the same thing they ran earlier in the, in the first series where they had that five-yard, uh, where they got tackled in the backfield for five, the guard pulled, and he slid through. They just can't run the power sweep right now. Stay penalty, away from it. Penalty on the play. Dead ball foul on sportsmanlike conduct against the Indians. After, uh, I think a little bit of a celebration. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a celebration. Jumping up and celebrating. and uh, You know, here's the deal. 
when you're, uh, and you hate to say this, but when you're Coach Marion and you had some issues with officials earlier in the year, you don't get the benefit of the doubt. No. And you set that up for yourself. I mean, you, you set that in motion for you, and you don't get the benefit of the doubt because of it. We're waiting for the yards to be marched off, and they haven't been yet. I'm not sure why the delay. There it goes. It's a 10-yard penalty, right? Or 15. Nope, 15. 15. A major infraction. Yeah, I guess it is 15. That will be a first down for the Blue Devils. So they get the uh, lost yardage on that one back. And some. Yeah, and some. Indian faithful on the other side. Not very uh, liking of that call, of course. Two receivers left side. Tight end to the right for the Blue Devils. One back in the backfield. He gets fakes it. He gets the ball. Who has it? Myers. <laughs> Myers. They ran a tight end pop pass and, and Stoddard was covered. He did the right thing. There's two things you do there. You tuck it and try to get as much as you can. Or you throw it so far over the tight end's head, nobody catches it. But if it's covered, there's no other guy out in the pattern. So it's the tight end pop, throw it over his head, or tuck it and run. He tucked it, ran, got a yard. One yard of the play, second and nine for the Blue Devils. 38 seconds remaining in this rather quick first quarter of play. Uh, uh, mainly because not too many incomplete passes. There has been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine passes, but only two incomplete so far in the contest. Two in the backfield for Myers. Going to give it to the fullback, Oberholzer, and he just has a whole crowd to try to get over, and it was no hole there at all. And only gets a yard on the play, maybe two yards. Off the 49, Matthew Oberholzer. That will be the end of quarter number one here at Cayley Field. The Blue Devils and the Indians battling the Indians' lead 14-7 to right here on the FNM Trust Sports Network on midpenbroadcasting.com and gametimepa.com. Days are shorter now, and South Central PA is showing off her best fall colors. That means home equity season at FNM Trust. The best time of year to rake in big savings with some of the best rates around on a home equity loan or line of credit. Access extra funds for anything you want. Consolidate high interest bills, keep up with college expenses, or get whatever you need. It's up to you. To rake in your savings during home equity season, visit any FNM Trust office or fmtrustonline.com. Restrictions apply. Equal housing lender. Brothers Pizza is a proud supporter of the Greencastle Blue Devils. Brothers Pizza offers a full menu, and breakfast is served seven days a week. Don't forget Brothers Pizza for your next football party or special event. Our menu selection is great for football parties, birthdays, and other special occasions. Dine in, carry out, and delivery. 50 Pine Drive, Greencastle, next door to Comfort Inn. Phone 597-5322 or order online at mybrospizza.com. Your home for Franklin County sports. This is midpenbroadcasting.com. Well, tonight we're doing what we want to do all the time, but never really have the opportunity to. All county teams you can get on Game Time PA. And uh, Myers, play action fake, throws to the middle. Almost caught by Hanson. Nice defensive play down there by Waynesboro defender. It's going to be number 20. That is uh, that is their running back, Wurtz, too. And he breaks it up. Or that would have been maybe six on the board. Yeah, nice throw by Myers. Got it in there, but good coverage. Good coverage by Waynesboro. And it looks like they're in a little bit of a man coverage here. So Waynesboro stays with Myers, or Greenhouse stays with Myers. Looks like they're going to go for it. Chambersburg, as you can pick up on Game Time PA. And then Shippensburg and James Buchanan, you can catch the video of that one wow. on Game Time PA also. JB up 14 nothing at Shippensburg. Wow. Iso back, three to the left, receiving-wise for the Blue Devils on fourth and six. Some pressure. Myers stands up, fires it to Hanson, makes the catch, and good for a first down at the 30-yard line. Gutsy call for the Blue Devils. Gutsy call for the Blue Devils on fourth down. Get back there. Meyer, or Kurt ran the little in route, the little curl route. They got him the football and able to move the sticks and keep the football, and that's what you have to do. You're going to have to get points out of this drive. To stay in this game, I hate to say it, but the way it's going right now, you need points to stay in it. Well, you need points to stay in it, and then you just hope that Waynesboro makes a mistake somewhere along the line to take away that high-powered offense that they are running. Two receivers to the right side, two in the backfield 
Tight ends to the left of the Blue Devils. Work from the center of the field. Myers gives it to Oberholzer. Oberholzer still on his feet. Rumbling downfield to inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Hey, Greg, you mentioned you mentioned you keep saying high-powered offense. If you guys are just joining us because we cover these Greencastle games, Waynesboro scored 50 points their last two games. 54 points the last. 54 two points games. against East Penn. 54 points against JV. So it's not we're not making that up. No, no. Just because they've run two long drives on us, that's not why we're saying that. It is. They've been putting points on the board all year long. And if you look at the totals, yardage-wise, it's just in, incredible, the offensive yardage. Sprague coming left on the end sweep. Has them blocking. Gets down to the 10. Chased out of bounds at about the 11-yard line. Looks like they're going to mark that thing right around the, uh, maybe even inside the 10, Greg, and right on the 10 there. and. Uh, okay, again, you, you're going to get that jet sweep. They're not real physical on that edge, and, and you got to keep maybe attacking that. Well, actually, we've seen two areas they're not very strong at. That's straight up the middle in that dive play, that right. belly dive, and around the edge. Blue Devils now knocking on the door again, 10 yards away, and a uh, chance to get another first down before they score as the second quarter is underway, 14-7, Waynesboro lead. Greencastle scored first. Waynesboro on their next two possessions. This is Overholzer. Does a little dance and gets the first down. Moves inside to the six-yard line for the Blue Devils. Yeah, the, unfortunately, the thing that's hurting the Blue Devils is with all the injuries this year, they've lost a lot of speed on this team. And so, really, you got Sam running the jet sweep, which is which is the speed that you have. And if he were in the backfield, it, you can do other things with him. Right. But because they don't have that speed in the backfield, it has to be the jet sweep. And that's where... That's where Greencastle's been, as you said, limited because of some of these injuries as they've mounted all year. So many other things they could do and so many other players coming in keeping fresh when you do that. Hanson will break out to the far side, standing at the hash marks on the right as Blue Devils work from just inside the left hash mark here and at the eight-yard line. Play action, Myers in trouble, fires and incomplete. And I don't know the intended receiver was going to be Sprague, and it uh, looks like Wurtz was on him again. Yeah, that one. You, you like, you'd rather he take the sack there than do that. Yeah, that was throwing into some heavy traffic. You want to always live to play again, right? That's right. You want to live for another play. Don't make any crazy plays. Just if you got to get a sack, you get a sack, and we still snap the ball, we can still play. Don't throw it into coverage just to get rid of it. Anson to the right. Sprague, wing back position to the left. Jet sweep. Yep. I thought, nope, not this time. Yeah, oh, oh counter the counter crisscross, crisscross and he is going to walk in. Sprague with a touchdown on the counter crisscross, and if you saw that, folks, Hines tripped but was able to get the ball into to the belly of Sprague, and he goes in for and the you touchdown. Could, and you could see also from our great cameraman, Steve Sibio, the way he had the camera set, that, that hole opened up like the Red Sea. And you could see once Sam got the ball in his hands, he could have walked in the end zone, and he did. You did. You said about the five-yard line, he's going to walk in, and that he did. Holden comes in to try to... Even up the score here as the Blue Devils fight back after giving up two scores to the Indian. Snap is down. Kick is up. Just barely got away. But Hansen hammers it, and it is good. And the extra point uh, Phil go, Phil brought to you by REMAX Premier X, second of the state line, Lowe's Bear Agents, 597-2777, 14-14 right now here, Mike, and 10-02 remaining. And we got ourselves a ball game, don't we? We do have ourselves a ball game, and you just hope that Greencastle can keep up this momentum here. But you got, man, you got to find a way to stop these Indians at least one time, one time coming down here before the half, and maybe take a lead on them or jump on them. But you got to find a way to get yourself in. The, and it's, uh, uh, it's just, it's the blueprint that's out here. Early in the preseason show, I said on the schedule, the one game that really concerned me this year was Waynesboro, just because I knew they were going to spread the field. And, and Greencastle, if you come out in a tight formation, their front seven will dominate you. You cannot run against right, them no, in a tight no. formation. But like this, they've been susceptible to this all year. And 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 give give Waynesboro credit for exploiting it. Wayne's, Greencastle and Holden, uh, excuse me, Hanson will kick off. That drive, by the way, was a 11-yard drive that went up. Uh, uh, 55 yards, 65 yards, capped by the eight-yard run for Sprague. Uh-oh, oh, that was a free want. ball rolling back to the one-yard line, and he's going to try to bring it out, and the Blue Devils hammering back at the five, 
and that was Wade, the ball carrier, and he just didn't feel the ball. It would have been an error if you were playing baseball, and that is a little, little uh, fired up, a little momentum switch here for the Blue Devils. A momentum switch, and, and earlier I was, I said in this game, wow, you know, make them go 98 yards, and <laughs> and they did. Yeah. So so it doesn't matter where they have the ball, you got to defend these guys. Connor Federhoff, a senior, didn't play football last year to concentrate on basketball. Coach Marion talked him into coming back out. They're going to give it to Marion there. Marion will lose one, will lose a second one, and he's on the loose. Sprague out there to get him and finally brings him down after he crosses over the 30 to almost the 35. They're going to spot it at the 33. Sprague's down. Looks like he's holding a leg there. Looks like it might be a knee or something. He's holding uh, on to a leg and... And, man, that's awful and awful for Sam if he's injured over there, but awful for this team because you can't afford to keep losing guys. No, not at all. That looks a little bit more interesting. I I will tell you, and uh, Sam will be the first to tell you also, that Sam seems to get injured. In every game, we were kidding tonight before the game, and he says about an injury. I said, Sam, you get injured every game, but normally he gets up and walks it off. Well, yeah, I, I was I was going to say that. I said, you know, I don't want to don't want to speculate here, but it would not surprise me if uh, Sam came over to the sideline and the two plays was back out back there because it's something that we do see. Yeah, it, and uh, I'll give him credit; he plays very physical out there. So we'll see what happens for the Blue Devils here. They're still uh, they're still tending to. Uh, Sam over at the sideline. He did make the tackle against um, Barry or Marion, who had a nice run. I'm going to now mess that up the whole night through. I can see it. Justin now. Marion was the ball carrier, and, and what they did, they came out, they ran trips into this side and brought all the defenders, the defensive backs over here, to worry about Peck and to worry about the trips. And they tried to run. They gave you a screen look over here, a little bubble screen action. So everybody stayed and froze on this side, and then they slipped him out to the back side on you know, one guy to beat and beat him and. And because he beat the corner to the far side, then Sam had to come across the field and make a play. So, uh, credit, there he is. There he is. He'll be fine. I hope two he plays. Can. I think two plays he'll be back. You know, I enjoyed, I, I, Vern McCauley, good friend, enjoyed to have him with me last week. But I did miss you because I forgot to give the contest last week. You didn't. I didn't. I did. And, and somebody called me on it, and I remembered it. So they were just like, you know, for the key word, they wrote down, Greg didn't give one, so uh, <laughs> so I just forgot to tell him. But, you know, you do have a chance to win two tickets and a bus transportation from Glines Tours to the Philadelphia Eagles Washington Redskins game Saturday, December 20th at FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland. We'll be giving you the winner next week, but we'll tell you the magic phrase or the phrase that pays at halftime. They're going to re read option. Pitch back to Barry. Marion. Marion gets a first down. The guy can run the football. Yeah, and it's Justin. Barry. It is Justin. Why? Now, I, I started Justin down there. Justin Marion. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was. Remember uh, with Parker Bailey and Bailey Parker. Yes, you got you did. Luke, Luke Kaiga down now. Yeah, Luke's down, and, and he looks, looks like, to be hurt, too. Yeah. Second consecutive play that the Blue Devils have come up with an injury. Second consecutive first down and second consecutive run by Justin Marion. He has uh, 979 yards rushing. I would assume now. Mike, that he's over the 1,000-yard mark by uh, because that last run, he might have had 30 yards on that one, and that would put him over the 1,000 yards for the year, which is really uh, pretty impressive. You know, the last time that Waynesboro had a 1,000-yard rusher was back in 2005 when uh, Michael McKenzie did it. He uh, had 1,761 yards that year, which, by the way, is the highest in Waynesboro history. So way back in 2005, and now they get another one here in 2014. Almost took another decade to get that. Greencastle's last 1,000-yard uh, rusher. Without looking, you remember? Without looking, do I remember? Um, I would say Greencastle's last 1,000-yard rusher. No, I couldn't tell you without looking. Denver Cordell. Denver Cordell had 1,251 back in 2011. He also did it in 2010. He had a 1,039 there. All-time leader, Mike Jamison, 1,687 Nobody's yards. Nobody's out senior there. Year. Nobody's out no there. No one's out there. Yeah, there goes someone out to guard as uh, Matt Chrisman comes in. And they're going in motion, sending Peck to the left side. 
Federhoff by himself, has some time, scrambles out, no one there to pick him up as he's going to get at least 10 yards as he travels out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Greencastle right, right now, I'm sure, I'm sure Coach Dennis is not happy with his front four. Uh, they're not getting off the ball. They're not get, They're getting zero pressure. They're not maintaining. The ends aren't containing the, the quarterback inside. They're not getting a push up into the pocket. So, and that's a tough play. You had you had Hanson running in motion with Peck and up the sideline. There's no way you can can't, you can't stay with him. Now you can't stay with him. By the way, spray back in defensively. They're going from the Wildcat to Marion. Marion still on his feet. This time they stop him for about a six-yard run, and I'll take that as a victory. First, uh, first time in this drive, they didn't get a first down. The so second and five. As you said, Mike, no backs. No backs. Connor back there in the quarterback position from the gun. Four to the right, one to the left. And a five spread, and Connor's going to keep it. Up the middle he goes, but he doesn't go anywhere. They read that one well, and he he does. He gets a yard or two, give him credit for that, but it's right over the 35 to the 34. Now they're going to say it was Peck in that shotgun or wildcat formation. They do, they, they are very aggressive, Mike. They do a lot of different things. Show you different looks. Now they're going back to that two in the backfield, side by side from the shotgun. And give it to Barry again. Darn, Marion. And he's going to be shy of the first down, but it's only going to be a yard short. Yeah, but give Greencastle credit because they got they got three plays here where they got them stopped. So uh, they got to stop them here. Last week, they were fantastic on fourth and short yardage. Stop at Northern each and every time, it seemed like. And they now look for the sideline to change the signal, and that will change the alignment for Waynesboro as they move the runners to the right side of Federhoff. They give it to the fullback, Wirtz, and Wirtz straight up the middle, and he gets the first down. He gets the first down right over the 30, but, but again, at least you're making them work for these scores. Make them work a little bit. Let them eat some time, too. Moving the sticks. 7.39 to go here in the uh, first half. 14-14 in this uh, ball game so far. Sprague back on the field. Yes, he's, he was back about two plays later. Three in the backfield. One includes the quarterback from the gun. Going to give the ball to Wirtz. Wirtz trying to go around the right side. Bumps off somebody and then finally sacked down and put down out of, over the 25 to about the 23. But it took a while to bring him down. Yeah, again, and you can see Greencastle just tired. They're just tired on defense right now because you don't see that out of a Greencastle team. They pursued perfectly. They had it all strung out, and they couldn't make the hit when they got there. The other Marion now in motion, unlike the Jets sweep. Federhoff fakes it, looking the pass, has some pressure, gets away from it, has some more pressure, gets away from it, and still on his feet, picks up perhaps the first down inside the 20-yard line. Yeah, they're beat. We got a timeout here. And lost of helmet. Uh, Overhauser lost his helmet, which means he has to come out. Yeah, the, it's a. Uh, it's been a lot of plays in a short period of time. Yeah. They're going to move the uh, chains up. First down for Waynesboro. Whole host, a whole stack of first downs for both teams. They'll put uh, Wirtz out to the left now in a wing position. Federhoff calls for the ball, steps three steps back, looks to throw and fires out here, completes the pass, and knocked out of bounds by Hansen as they go back to Peck again. He's shy of the first down, but not by a lot. No, and that's two times where Hansen came up and, and Peck almost gets by him. And you, you know, you want to talk to Kurt on the sideline and tell him, you got to go chest on chest. You got to hit that guy and wrap him up and run your feet through him. You can't just dive at his feet. Federhoff looking to pass again, rolls over to the right side, fires for the end zone, and it is way out of bounds and incomplete, though it did seem like there was a little bump and bruise down there, but nothing. No, they just tripped their feet on the route. Trip, he, they like that corner route. Don't be surprised if they don't come back to Peck with that against Hanson because he hasn't covered it, and uh, Peck gets the nice inside move and then out to the, out to the pylon. You know, I'm sure I'm wrong because for me to keep stats, it's somewhat difficult, but I only have six passes for the part of Waynesboro and all the plays they run. Well, now, four more for an interception. That's right. Marriott goes nowhere on a third down play at a loss of a yard. 
for him on that one. A fourth and three situation for the Indians. And Dunnigan does a nice job there at Starlipper. They did exactly what you're like, like they played all year. Keep that outside arm and leg free. Make him jump outside, pop out, make the tackle. Wade They're kicking a field goal. Yeah. What? Wade's coming in to kick a field goal. I'm surprised by that too. Me too. The extra points haven't even been that close. They they uh, haven't had a field goal. They're 0 for 1. Oh, it's a fake as they go right to it. Tackle. Oh, Sprague almost had him but couldn't get to him. And now finally bringing him down before short. he reaches the 10, short of the first down. Oh, he puts it right on the 10. He put his foot on the 10, but it's short. It's short. They And Waysboro does that. We, You know, it's crazy. We talked about that. They take chances all the time. And the chances that they take sometimes backfire, and this could be one that gets them. So the ball will be at the 10. It, they, yeah, they've only, they have only attempted one field goal, and they missed it. So it was sort of strange that they were going for it on that one. Blue Devils get the ball back at their own territory at the 10-yard line, 90 yards away for their fourth possession of the ball game. It's 14-14, 5.30 to go here in the half. Hines coming around the outside of the left side toward us and picks up two or three on the play. Hey, I, I don't want to correct you on anything, but we got a message from Waynesboro that their last 1,000-yard rusher was Johnny Adger. You know, you are 2012. You're right. He had, well, he had a, he had 1,093, and then in 2012 he had 12 or 15.04. So Johnny Adgers is their uh, their last thousand yard rusher. Well, so we, we thank our correction. We yes. appreciate that yeah, from do. the uh, historian at Waynesboro. I didn't know they had one. They do. They okay. Have a, they have a local historian. Second and eight. Handoff goes to Oberholzer. Oberholzer still moving his feet and gets up to the 15 yard line through three yard pickup. 444 here. Blue Devils coming up. I'm going to say it. Third and five and a big third down play. Third down five for the Blue Devils. Blue Devils. Oh, Indians switch up a little defense. Marion was off, but he comes back in now. Blue Devils will send one out to the outside. And one to the left. Play action rolling to the right is Spencer Myers looking to throw. Fires upfield. Complete the sprig at the 26-yard line and a first down. Great catch by Sam. Is that Sam in there on a dive catch? Yep. Laying out to get that ball. Good throw by Myers, though. Man, he, he's playing well tonight. He's playing like the re I thought he'd play like this all year. Uh, he's doing a great job tonight. It looked like Sprague was double teamed even. Yep. And, and to get the ball into him was a great pass and a great catch. Both those guys having great games so far. First and 10 now. Blue Devils take it under four minutes. Boy, with nothing better to score on this drive and take a lead into the locker room at halftime. This is going to be overhaul, sir, swamped for a loss of about two yards. Initial contact on the play by 62 Terrell White. Terrell White, the call from Vern McCauley on the defensive play. So that's second and 11, we'll call it. Second down, Blue Devils. The Blue Devils need to come up with a big play here on second down. Both teams, all three timeouts remaining here in the first half. Been an interesting first half, to say the least. Up and down the field. It's been, it's been fun. We've been waiting for these games for, for the last five years we've been doing this <laughs> and wanted to see something like this. We have. Hines trying to go around the right side. Gets a little run. Removes his feet. Gets breaks the, Really gets close to the first down yeah. as he goes over to 35. They're not going to spot him for the – yeah, they are. Yep. They give him the first down. Give it to him. Boy, he's running tough, isn't he? Hines always runs tough. He runs his feet. He doesn't go down on the first hit. And he's done a nice job with that. We got a whistle blown here, so it looks like we're going to get a timeout by Waynesboro. Waynesboro wants to talk things over here at the uh, 256 mark. 14 14, Blue Devils with the ball. We'll be back oh, after no. these words on the FM Trust Sports Network and midpenbroadcasting.com and gametimepa.com. There's nothing like being at the game the excitement, the fun, the food, and all the waste. Whether it's popcorn boxes, hot dog wrappers, or this soda cup. Big games generate tons of waste. That's why Waste Management is helping stadiums and businesses reduce waste altogether through recycling and organic composting. 
To learn more, talk to your local waste management representative or visit thinkgreen.com. You're listening to Blue Devils Football with Greg Hoover and Mike Montadoro on midpenbroadcasting.com. 2.56 remaining in half number one. 14 14 our score. Place packed, Mike. A lot of people here tonight. Now, there's a lot of kids here for the race for education, the elementary and primary schools fundraiser, but there's a lot of people around the fences as the stands are packed here, too. It's been fun. Hine with the ball gets stopped right away on that first down play and only about two yards on the carry. And they, man, eh, two, yeah, we'll call it second and eight. Looks like the band is back. It is. So yeah. we got those band parents are back, too, to fill in a little that bit. Helped out. But we're good. I tell you what, you know, we, we've talked about uh, the band has been on, uh, it was at the game last week. We appreciate their presence there. They're, and uh, uh, doing a great job. I'm sure the parade went well for them. Silva to the outside in the wide out position. And here comes the counter crisscross. Going. Sprague up the middle over the 50. He's a horse race now to the 30, to the 20. And he's brought down inside the 15 yard line after a big game from Sam Sprague on the counter crisscross. Run the counter crisscross. They can't, they can't defend it because they get trapped so easily inside. And, and Samuel with enough speed to get up the field and get a big chunk. 2.13 to go in this quarter, and he put him in a great spot, a good scoring position. It certainly does. First and 10 for the Blue Devils. Wow. Big plays galore. Big plays galore is right. It's exciting night. It is, it is, it is. Sprague goes to the position of the wing back at the left side, and there's an encroachment, I hope, as the flag comes from the side judges there. That's what it is. Offsides against the Indians. Their third penalty of the ball game, and that'll be a five-yarder. Takes it down to the nine-yard line, and still first and five. Silva in the same position to the short side of the field on the right side. Hine and Oberholzer in the backfield for the Blue Devils, and Oberholzer gets the call. Right Belly. side, Belly down to the three-yard line. That's going to be another first down. Greencastle just runs the ISO to Belly play. They get ahead of steam with it, give it to Overholzer, let him run inside, and they sit down there at the three, and now the whole playbook is kind of open up to him a little bit. And uh, and if you're Waynesboro, you look back on that and go, why, why? If you're going to go for it on fourth down, why fake a kick? Your offense is too good for that. That's true. Overholzer again. Dragged down, but he picks up maybe a yard, which is okay. I think they need to take three plays before they score. Take some time off the clock. Oh, is that how you want to look at that? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to give him the ball back with a minute? Well, yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> I mean, I kind of want the touchdown. I don't, I don't care what point what, it comes. point in time it comes. Yeah, yeah. You, want, you want the points on the board and then hope that they throw a pick or something and they don't get down the field. But, yeah, that's what, I want. That's uh, what I'd well, really like to see. Okay. Same offensive alignment as they ran last time. Myers straight up under center. Takes the keeper. The Steve Zibio keeper. Where's the signal? Oh, they're, say, they're saying he did not make it. They're saying he did not make it. He's at the half inch line. Wow. Oh, now they're saying That's a fumble. fumble. That would be awful here. Fourth down. Oh. Fourth down. Woo. Third down, right? Third down. Third down, sorry. Two more plays to get it in. Oh, my God. Hold on to the ball down yeah. there. Well, that was just one Waynesboro jumping up and down. So. Yeah, but he looked, he convinced me. I know. <laughs> Scared me. Convinced me. Yeah, the reason you run a QB sneak so you don't have to exchange down there. That's right. Uh-oh, fumble. They That's get him. It. That's it. Oh, and that was a QB sneak. Yep, right through his hands. Yep. Devastating. Second turnover of the ball game for the Blue Devils. None for Waynesboro. This one, deep, deep, deep in the in Waynesboro territory. Wow, that one hurts. That wow. would have, a, yeah. And you run that play down there so you don't have to exchange it to guys back there and take a loss, and you keep it in his hands, and you find a little seam and get up there, and it looked like he was pulling out as opposed to trying to just get up inside. Actually, the recovery is at the three-yard line for Waynesboro, so they'll get an opportunity here on their fourth offensive possession. Three, full house backfield, and they're going to run a little uh, little belly up the left side. Looks more like a uh, uh, option play. 
Second down. Waysboro will take a timeout here. They will take a timeout at the 30-second mark of this one. Uh, the Blue Devils had actually, Mike, let's be honest, they have moved the ball well. The interception and the right. fumble have caused it to come back here. And th without those two turnovers, it might be a 28-14 to 14 ball game. It very well could be a 28-14 to 14 ball game, but uh, this one down here really, I mean, this one hurts bad. Yeah. Uh, you're on the half-inch line, and and you lose the ball, and you, you don't get in, and that's that. I mean, you could you could have really, knowing that Waynesboro gets the ball to start the third quarter, you could have had a seven-point cushion maybe. Right. right. Same offensive alignment, two to the near side of the field, one out to the left, and two in the backfield standing uh, behind Federhoff. And Federhoff goes to the pistol formation. He will give it to Barry. Barry looks right, can't get anywhere, and <laughs> dropped Barry right away Barry. for no gain on the play. Or Marion. I, I'm just going to call him Barry. I like that name. Oh, I'm sorry. Marion. Once you get it in your head, it's How hard to Justin? get How about Justin? Justin. How about you just call him Justin? Justin will be it. Justin in the backfield. Federhoff. Looks around, time for one more play, looking to throw, fires down the middle, almost caught, falls incomplete with .3 seconds to go. They're going to get another play. Oh. And that's the uh, home clock operator. Yeah, I don't know who's down there, but. .03, yeah. Fourth down Fourth coming down. up. Well, you might as well go for it. Well, what do you yeah. got to lose, right? Yeah, really. But I think you got to get a sack here. Now. Well, let's see. Yeah, get a, get in in the end zone. They're back gonna, up, back up, back up. Just have everybody run, back up. Running from the yards. Wildcat. Running from the Wildcat. Justin with the ball has some blockers pulled, but he's not going to get anywhere. And the end of the second quarter is now over. First half of play is over. Blue Devils and Waynesboro tied at 14-14 on the FNM Trust Sports Network on midpenbroadcasting.com and gametimepa.com. Days are shorter now, and South Central PA is showing off her best fall colors. That means home equity season at FNM Trust. The best time of year to rake in big savings with some of the best rates around on a home equity loan or line of credit. Access extra funds for anything you want. Consolidate high interest bills, keep up with college expenses, or get whatever you need. It's up to you. To rake in your savings during home equity season, visit any FNM Trust office or fmtrustonline.com. Restrictions apply. Equal housing lender. Football season is here, and Klein Tours has your ticket and bus transportation to NFL action. We have trips to all Baltimore Ravens home games. Join Klein Tours as we travel to Miami to watch the Ravens play the Dolphins December 6th through 9th. We have your ticket and transportation to see the Washington Redskins. Trips to New York City, Atlantic City, multi-day tours, and more. Klein Tours, the Tri-State's number one tour and travel agency. Visit us online at KleinTours.com or phone 717-597-5997. There's nothing like being at the game. The excitement, the fun, the food, and all the waste. Whether it's popcorn boxes, hot dog wrappers, or this soda cup. Big games generate tons of waste. That's why Waste Management is helping stadiums and businesses reduce waste altogether through recycling and organic composting. To learn more, talk to your local waste management representative or visit thinkgreen.com. Fast Science helps businesses like yours with their visual communications. We ask the right questions, recommend smart solutions, and help you build your business. Our knowledgeable consultants uncover your communication challenges and provide visible solutions. At Fast Science, we're innovators, planners, and designers. We're more than fast, more than science, and we're more than ready to help. Contact Fast Science today. Visit www.fastsides.com or visit us at our Green Castle at York locations. Chalk Talk, the only program dedicated exclusively to Franklin County High School football, is on midpenbroadcasting.com. Join Gary Klein and Mike Montadoro every Thursday night at 7.30, streaming live from John Allison Public House, 401 East Baltimore Street in Greencastle. We preview each week's upcoming games and talk with the players, coaches, and reporters. You're invited to join the conversation. Email us your questions and comments during the show. Chalk Talk. 
on midpenbroadcasting.com. You're listening to Blue Devils Football with Greg Hoover and Mike Montadoro on midpenbroadcasting.com. You know, Greg, uh, we talked, we ran into this commercial with a Chalk Talk segment, and I wanted to remind everybody that we had Coach Andy Stoner on last night, and Coach Stoner from JB was there. It's archived, so you can go back and listen to it. I also also want to remind everyone, please, uh, I've been saying this all year, if you come on Thursday night to hang out, we do have a speaker system. You can somewhat hear us, and if you come in and just tell us that you – you know, you you heard about it on at the game. Gary's going to buy you a beer. It's a good and, deal. And Gary says he's still able to afford his tab. He told me last night. That's good. That's it, really. Yeah, because no one no one's no come one's up, come no up one's and said, "Hey, up. buy me a beer, Gary Klein." Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Gary is still willing to do that. And uh, please stop in and say, "Hey, I heard about it on the game, and Gary should should buy us a beer." And and uh, and. And he will. And he will. Speaking of Gary Klein, he is in Chambersburg tonight. The Harrisburg Cougars are he is in not. Town. He's not there. He is not. He's J.B. Shippensburg tonight. And Mike Berger and um, Dan Lang. Dan Lang. Dan yeah. Lang are doing the Chambersburg game, and Gary is doing J.B. Shippensburg tonight. We got all three games. All three games. And, and you know, we want to do that. That's what we're, we want to be. We That's want to be... Franklin County source for high school football, basketball, but particularly football season. We want to do every county game, and uh, glad we could do it tonight. That, that's a step in the right direction. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. We are going to get there, hey, and it is a step in the right direction. Every year we grow, and you know now it's always a bit video with our – Usually uh, just my waist. Yeah, well, that's true too. <laughs> yeah, but Chalk Talk's big this year. has been going well. I even had someone tell me tonight they listened, and it was great last night. Of course, it was Steve, but you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> but that's but, what we do. We 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 congratulate each other <laughs> constantly. So <laughs> he still does so, a great job on the camera tonight. <laughs> so Craig, you're awesome. I thank you, thank so, you. Yeah. <laughs> that's how. That's why we keep doing it because we 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 massage each other's that's egos. Right. You know, we uh, don't we don't need a lot of people telling us we're doing a good job. <laughs> just one or two, and, and uh, it's just we. You know, the bottom line is we we love high school sports and and what it represents, and we just just really. Uh, uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors for making these broadcasts a possibility. Got a dandy here tonight coming in. We thought it might be just what it is. And actually, Wayne's Bar scoring at will and Greencastle moving the ball. Let's review the scoring drives from the first half here as we do open up the uh, the halftime show brought to you by uh, – Antrim Insurance, your local area insurance agent serving Greencastle, Waynesboro, Chambersburg, Mercersburg, and surrounding areas. And uh, don't forget, Antrim Insurance located 169 South Antrim Greencastle, and 1685 East Main Street, Waynesboro. Mike will update us on a few scores in just a moment. Blue Devils opened up. They got the ball in the kickoff. They had their own 32, and it only took eight plays. And they were eight or seven plays. Myers hits the tight end Stoliber for a 15-yard pass play. 68 yards, seven plays. Kick was good. It was seven nothing. But lo and behold, 16 seconds later, one play. It was a 70-yard pass from Federhoff to Peck, his favorite receiver, and they get on the board, tie it up seven seven. Greencastle moves the ball from the 28, and at the two-yard line, a, inter, a bear comes up with an interception for Waynesboro. So Waynesboro gets the ball back, and they work uh, 10. They work actually eight plays and a 12. Our pass again from Federhoff to his favorite receiver Peck. The kick is good. It is 14 to 7. Blue Devils then take the ball at their own 35, able to move 11 plays, uh, eight yard spray run up the middle. The kick was good. It's 14 14. Greencastle was able to hold Waynesboro on Waynesboro's third possession to give the ball up on downs. They took over at their own 10-yard line. They, on a big play from a, a big running play, Sam Sprague on the counter crisscross. They get it down inside the Blue Devil territory to the one-yard line, but then a fumble on the quarterback sneak gives the ball back to Waynesboro. They only had two plays. They couldn't do much. Here's an interesting stat from the ball game, and, and I'm off the field just to be honest with you, but Waynesboro, Greencastle ran 35 plays, Waynesboro 26. That's what you want. You know? That's exactly what you want. You don't want Waynesboro to run. Now, you don't want them to run one-play drives <laughs> for 80 yards and score. Right. But you definitely want them to have the ball a lot less than you have it. You want to short. You know, we talk about shortening the game. 
shorten their opportunities. As that clock is running, as you're running the ball and getting six, seven yards, moving the sticks, and putting together your own 60, 70-yard drives, you're limiting their opportunities. And if they get behind, they, they panic and feel like they have to do more too fast, and that's when you create turnovers for them. The problem with the Blue Devils has been the Achilles heel in the games they've lost this year, turnovers. Right, right. It has been. You know, it, as, you, as you look, and you, we can sit there and say keys to the game. One, you gotta you got to control the football. Two, you got to put some pressure on Federhoff, which I don't think they have. Not at all. And, and three, you get, you got to limit your turnovers and penalties at the same time. They have limited their penalties, but the turnovers are still biting them in the butt, and that's what's, that's where we're at here. It could easily be 28-14 without the turnovers. Nevertheless, that's not what the score is. It is 14-14, and it should be a wild and furious second half of play. We come back. We're going to take a look at the scoreboard throughout the area as we take this break on the end. Andrew Insurance Halftime Show right here on FNM Sport Trust Sports Network on midpenbroadcasting.com and gametimepa.com. Hey, insurance companies that want to spend a gazillion dollars on funny TV ads can go right ahead, as long as it's not my money paying for it. For seriously good auto, home, business, or life insurance, I go to Erie Insurance, where a great price is just the start. You get unbelievable service, independent agents you can really trust, and superior products. But don't just take it from me. Talk to your local Erie agent. Call Antrim Insurance. In Greencastle, call 593-0500. In Waynesboro, call 762-4565. It's home equity season at FNM Trust. The best time of year to rake in big savings with some of the best rates around on a home equity loan or line of credit. To rake in your savings during home equity season, visit fmtrustonline.com. Equal housing lender. Brothers Pizza is a proud supporter of the Greencastle Blue Devils. Brothers Pizza offers a full menu, and breakfast is served seven days a week. Don't forget Brothers Pizza for your next football party or special event. Our menu selection is great for football parties, birthdays, and other special occasions. Dine in, carry out, and delivery. 50 Pine Drive, Greencastle, next door to Comfort Inn. Phone 597-5322 or order online at mybrospizza.com. Have heating or air conditioning needs? Look no further than Lecron's Comfort Solutions. We service all brands, heat pumps, humidifiers, system replacements, gas, oil, electric heat, and ductless systems. Lecron's Comfort Solutions is your authorized train dealer. Call Corey at 717-597-3768 for a free estimate. We are licensed and insured. Lecron's Comfort Solutions, local company, local name, serving Greencastle and all of Franklin County with professional service and installation. Dell Martin Incorporated, a full-service advertising agency, has been serving the tri-state area for 35 years. We specialize in screen printing and embroidered clothing. Del Martin Incorporated supplies a full range of brand name uniforms for athletic, work and medical applications and a full line of advertising essentials. We have an in-house artist ready to put your ideas to work for you. T-shirts for schools, clubs, churches and events. Del Martin Incorporated, 21 Sarah Susan Lane, Greencastle. Phone 717-597-5751 or online at delprint.com. Streaming live with over 70 local sporting events a year, this is midpenbroadcasting.com. If it hadn't been for God and I, Joe, I'd been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton I, Joe? If it hadn't been if you're taking a look right now at the Waynesboro Indian Marching Band. It's halftime here at Greencastle Antrim Athletic Complex on Kelly Field. Nine minutes or so is extended halftime. There's a lot of activities going on. 14-14 our score. Some stats I didn't give you, Mike. Talk to you about the plays. But, of course, you know the Greencastle had two interceptions or two uh, turnovers. Waynesboro, none. Passing unofficially. Waynesboro, Federhoff, four of eight. And for Myers, six of nine with the one INT. Three penalties for the Indians. Amounting to 25 yards, Blue Devil with just one motion penalty for five yards. A lot of action around the area, mid Penn League, and uh, uh, particularly the Colonial, as we've watched the Colonial. As we tell you before, there's four teams right now tied for first place. One will drop tonight in this uh, Greencastle Waynesboro game, and Shippensburg and East Pennsboro, the other two teams are three and one. Let's check out the scoreboard now. 
Wow. East Pennsboro's up 28-13 at Big Spring. Not a surprise. The no. surprise for us, East Pennsboro was losing to Waynesboro as badly as they did. That was the, the one where maybe they just kind of dis, dis, didn't get ready to play that football game. Uh, Shippensburg at James Buchanan right now. James Buchanan is up 14-0 is the, is the latest score we have on that. So uh, that's a little bit of a surprise. Well, it is a surprise. And, you know, Waynesboro, excuse me, James Buchanan might have hit a turning point when they played us that night because they played really well. Now, they did get beat by Waynesboro in a, in a, in a lopsided score, but they were there in the ball game for the, you know, for it, the it most of the It fell apart in the fourth quarter. Yeah. They had a couple of turnovers, and then Waynesboro or stuck a couple in, and then they just kind of snowballed into the fourth Ladies quarter. Gentlemen. Well, I talked to Andy last night on Chalk Talk. Really One of the things he said was, hey, we, we fell in love with this five-wide formation with Pates in the backfield, and, and we're going to stick with it. Mm-hmm. We think it's yeah. working for us, sure. and we've fallen in love with it, and we think it's our best opportunity to win. And, and again, I think Ship is a lot like Greencastle. Uh, they're down a little bit. They don't have the speed and the athletes on the outside. So, uh, you know, they're going to struggle. And Ship, the one thing they've had trouble with all year is scoring points. Their offense has is, is been pedestrian at best. And so they're in that position tonight. Uh, defensively, maybe they hold JB to 14, but I don't know if Ship can score 14. Right. Uh, to stay in this, but that game should turn out pretty well in the second half. I think that'll be kind of exciting as it comes down to the finish. Uh, Lower Dolphin has beaten Northern York 34 nothing. Uh, you know the score here is 14-14. I'll try to get you to Chambersburg score, uh, Chambersburg Harrisburg as soon as I can that Colonial Division. But while we're looking at that, how about you tell me about District Three playoffs and how this game affects and plays out tonight? Well, you know Greencastle right now sitting at the 16th spot in Triple A. To lose would probably put them out of the playoffs, even if they could muster a win next week against Shippensburg. It, it may not, but I, w- I, I think it might. I think it might just because they're sitting right now at, at, at the 16th spot. For the Indians, they are at the 20th spot, and they need to get to the 16th. Interesting enough, though, the, the schedules that Redding and J.B. McCaskey and Southwestern have, if they would lose, there is a, and it's a great possibility they have. And Vern McCauley had this figured out last week. He thinks that if Waynesboro wins out, they can get into the playoff, even with that 6-4 and four record. Be, uh, which would be pretty amazing. The Blue Devils might struggle to get in with a 6-4 and four record. And, and that's because the AAA division is really tough this year. But, but typically you find 6-4 and four sneaking in. Now that it's 16 teams, you, you know, you don't, you're not shocked when you hear about a 6-4 and four team getting in. Uh, Chambersburg right now, they're losing 19. I think it's 19-3. to three. Hold on a second. Let me check it again. I'm sorry. Chambersburg is, yeah, 19-3 to three, losing to Harrisburg. Uh, so that's one that that we kind of that we kind of thought going yeah. in, but but yeah, I, in this Waynesboro team offensively, I like what they're doing. Um, but again, this does not translate to beating the Bishop number McDevitt. one seed. Yeah. Or, well, no, they're not going to play McDevitt. No. They're going to end up playing. It could be CD East, right? Well, or they, Wilson. They could play Wilson. They could play CD East. East. So uh, that, that's yeah. not going to translate to beating those guys, just because they can match up with them athlete for athlete, and they're going to you know. They, they've played this offense throughout the year. So it's still going to be a struggle for them in the quad A division. But if they get there, they give them a heck of a lot of credit for doing that. Bishop McDevitt losing right now to Redland 24-20. So uh, that could change wow. the top of the bracket a little yep. bit. But, hey, you know, you, you just want to get in the dance, right? Yeah, that that you do. You want to get there. However you get there, you just get there. That's the big thing. By the way, Ed Gawals is downstairs. He's having some technical difficulties, but he's texted up some scores for us or some stats for us. First down, Waynesboro's have 13. Greencastle has 16. Who would have thought that? But, of course, the ADR play. Yeah, first down, yeah, you don't need that. Rushing, Waynesboro, 21 carries for 143. Greencastle, 27 carries for 178. Waynesboro 5-8 for 114, Greencastle 6-10 and 1 for 69. Total offense, check this out, this is pretty cool. Waynesboro 257, Greencastle 247. So it, it, is, uh, it, it is an even ball game, and the scoreboard would dictate that at 14-14. Take a look at the field right now. You see tons of little kids running around from the Greencastle Antrim Primary and Elementary School. They every year do a fundraiser called Race for Education. They walk around this track for a, a couple hours, and they get donations. It is amazing the amount of money, Mike, they bring in. It has taken the place of traditional fundraisers. You know, you don't have to buy the chocolate candy and 
gain 20 pounds every time someone comes to your door with it. They just give donations for that. They have raised, I think it's close to like $100,000 this year to, to go toward. Yeah, it is. It's, in fact, I'm thinking of having one for myself. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. But you know, the nice thing about this, though, Greg, is when you do a race for education, the kids get all the money. Yep, they it, do. It, you know, the, when you do fundraisers, the guy who runs the fundraiser makes a nice chunk of change off it. The company selling the cookies make a nice – everyone takes – everyone dips into the fundraiser. When you do something like this, all the money goes to the kids and to the schools. Uh, that's, a, that's a great way to do it. Whoever came up with the idea, I don't know who they are, but, but a great idea, a great concept. Well, Steve says we should do the race for mid-pen broadcasting. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be me, you, and uh, Gary out there walking around. Uh, yeah, but but you know, my mother would do. Well, it. yeah, I think I think we get some dollars. Yeah, you know, six or seven dollars. I think we could probably raise compared to what they did. But but a great fundraiser. Great to see all the kids here tonight. It's great to see all the people out here tonight. Beautiful night for football, as we mentioned, the Blue Devils uh, and Waynesboro in a game that maybe I don't know. We I don't know. We you know. 14-14. I'm just going to ask you, did you think that was going to be the score at halftime? Um, well, not the way it started. I didn't, I didn't think it was going to be 14-14. I thought this game would be close. I didn't think it would be a high-scoring football game for some reason just because of the teams that Waynesboro played this year that I thought were competitive and, and good other than the East Pennsboro game. Uh, they, they held them down. They held the offense in check. Um, so I didn't think it, I didn't think they'd jump out to start to the start. The biggest thing that surprises me tonight is oh, no somebody I, I can do it with my pinky by accident. <laughs> but the thing that surprised me tonight when you did the stats, the Waynesboro only has 114 yards passing. Yeah, and, that, that to me is shocking. Now they've run the ball way more effectively than than we thought they could coming in. But well, but, and remember, 70 yards of that was on one play out of the 114 yards passing. Right, right. Yeah. So it's not, you know, I mean, it is 30, one 40, play. 44, but, 54 yards after that, yeah. But there are two touchdowns on the corner routes to Peck. Um, you know, that that's you got to kind of figure out a way at halftime to get that stopped and then get this run. To, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking forward to a great second half because neither team can stop the other. No, so you're right. Greencastle has stopped themselves twice. Right. And Waynesboro hasn't stopped themselves yet. So, well, they, they, I, I, yeah. I didn't like the call. I didn't. I didn't like the fake field goal only because offensively you're good enough all night to move the ball to get first down six yards a clip, ten yards sometimes. You're good enough to do that all night. Why well, line up in a field goal formation? To, to try to get the first down or to get on the edge. That didn't make any sense to me on a fourth down play. If you're going to go for it, have enough confidence in your offense to line up and get that. It was just like, it's just like you wanted to do something tricky, and that's why you did it. Yeah, for no reason. For no reason, and, and it certainly didn't help them any. But nevertheless, it is it is an interesting ball game. You know, you talked a couple, I don't know when it was. We were talking about rivalries for Greencastle. You know, we, we always say James Buchanan, we say Waynesboro, we say Shippensburg and even Chambersburg. And you said, doesn't that, doesn't a rivalry have to be competitive? Right. And, you know, and you were you know, you know were right, particularly like James Buchanan and Waynesboro has been a long time before either those teams have beaten Greencastle. Matter of fact, Greencastle and Waynesboro, they uh, it's it's 16 wins, nine losses, and one tie for Greencastle in this series. Uh, Greencastle has won the last 12 straight. They played from 81 to 93. Waynesboro won the last game, and then from 2002 on, Greencastle has won them all. But you sort of knew coming in tonight, and is and you can tell by the size of the crowd here that rivalry is back because Waynesboro has now a competitive team that certainly can play football. And that's what you want, right? I mean, yeah, that's what do. we all want. We want we want Waynesboro to be competitive each year. We want Ship to be great. We want JB to be great. We want these games on Friday nights to be meaningful. And these meaningful games, this one tonight, if you do get in the playoffs, tonight helped you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very winning, much so. Winning 42 to nothing tonight doesn't help you first round of district so so uh, you know say what you want you want a game like this you want to you want to face adversity you want your back against the wall you want to be able to come out here tonight maybe pull out a win gel together as a team bond together as a team know that you can come back in a game like this maybe shut down this offense score and then not be afraid to face a team like this in round one well you got it well tonight's halftime show has been brought to you by antrim insurance your local area insurance agent serving greencastle waynesboro chambersburg mercersburg and surrounding areas antrim insurance 169 south answerway greencastle and 1685 east main street waynesboro greencastle Won the toss, elected to receive, scored the touchdown, but that means they will kick away to Waynesboro here to start half number two. And uh, 
We'll see how half number two goes. 14 14 up on the FM Trust scoreboard here at Green Castle. Hanson kick travels to the right. If it stays in bounds, it'll be great, but it doesn't. If it goes out of bounds around the 10 yard line, and up it will come to the 35. So Waynesboro trots out their offense. We'll see what they can do here in the first series, or more importantly, what Greencastle can do defensively. Uh, we talked uh, some more stats from Ed Waynesboro. Marion with 95 yards rushing. We said he would go over the 1,000 mark and has. Peck has th uh, three catches for 89 yards. Sprague has 97 yards rushing and 38 on receptions. And Overhalser, 11 runs, 54 rushes at the halftime stats. Empty backfield except for the quarterback comes out and fires right away to Peck. Peck eludes Hansen. Now goes to the right side, gets a wow. block, but there's a flag on the play. And Peck's going to go in for the score, That's but it's going to come back. That, that was quite the, there's oh, another there's one. another one. That's going to be an unsportsman. Yep, yep. You're going to get 30 yards out of that. Well, look, I, I, you know, again, I wish we had instant replay, but it certainly looked like a block in the back to me. I don't know if it was a block in the back, but it was a peel back block, which are illegal. Peel back blocks are now illegal. You can't turn around and peel back and get somebody when the play's beyond them. And he got 15 on the peel back, and then one of the coaches went nuts on the sideline, and they're going to get another 15. And again, when you badmouth the officials in week two, publicly in the paper, you don't get calls to go in your you way. You don't. You don't. And I and I'll you say this in a nice way: you don't deserve to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, both penalties, as you said, uh, thirty well, no, yards. That, that was not a penalty. I think the second one was just a sideline warning. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So you got a ten yard. It was a block in the back, and then the second flag was a sideline warning. So it'll be the 42-yard line for Waynesboro, and they're at their own 42-yard line. Kurt Hansen has got to run through Peck. He has to. He's got to keep his feet moving and run through. If he stands still, Peck's a better athlete. Five wide with four on the wide side of the field as Federhoff all by him. Lows him back in the backfield in the shotgun formation. First and short yardage. Back to look again. He's under heavy rush this time, but he comes out running. And Sprague come up and finally brings him down with a little help from Hanson that time. And nice stiff arm. And it is a uh, first down on the play. Nice job by Federoff. Good run. Greencastle playing man coverage. And you're susceptible to that man coverage if you don't get a guy on the edge keeping the quarterback contained. They're going to switch the... Uh, receivers to the far side of the field which is the wide side so they have four over there and one here who looks like he's lined up off sides um, now he moves back as he looks for the play from the sideline coach Brennan Marion making the call Federhoff he's going to bring one over Peck over to this side in motion and they're looking for Peck stepping up a little bit. Heavy pressure from Stolliber, and out comes Federhoff again. Gives a little ball fake, and then runs out of bounds for another first down. And that, that's what they—that's what JB did with Pate. Get and there's the pressure. Once you get outside of Stolliber, everyone else is in man coverage, and you can run for 10, 15 yards all you want because there's no one out there to tackle you. Here we go again. Semi eye formation in the backfield, and it will go to Marion, who is hit right away. Done again with the first stop. A little help from his friend Bob Ryder, and he is down behind the line of scrimmage. Actually, they're going to, yeah, they are going to give him a two yard loss on it. Uh, he had, uh, as we said, over 100 yards in the first half. He, they fake it this time, pitch to him on the uh, option read. And gets tripped up a little bit and gets uh, some yardage on it. Clayton Hartman got the first hit, three-yard gain. Actually, five yards as it was two-yard back, but third and seven. Hanson makes the tackle. Third and seven. Third and seven. It was. Read it well. Straight back, looking to pass. Fires out here for the corner. Completes the pass to number 10 for the Indians. And that will be a first down for them. That is Charlie Patterson. Nice route. The ball was thrown before he made the break. So that's a great throw by Federoff. He makes the break. The ball's thrown before it, and Greencastle has no way to defend it. Just tackle. 
First pass of the half. They're going to line up in that same formation with Wirtz and Marion in the backfield along with Federhoff. Federhoff going to roll with his team and decides to come back this way and gets knocked down by Stoliber. That time they got it. That time they held him inside. Dunnigan came up the field, made Federhoff turn around, and Stoliber was there to make the play. So if they play it disciplined and right, they can continue to do that. But they got to maintain that outside edge. Federoff's not going to run the ball up the middle of the field against you. No, he's not. He's not. And wisely, every time he's run, he's gotten out of bounds, which is just smart on his part. Looking to pass. Three-step drop. Throws out here. Incomplete pass in the hand. Uh-oh. There's a flag. Uh, and, it, and, you know, just I think uh, Matthew Christman thought he might have caught the ball, and he didn't. And so he tackled him, and then that's going to be oh, a penalty. Oh, man. That's what, you can't have that. You got to be smarter than that. That gives him a first down. Well, it'll be, what, second and two or something. Well, no. Is it what? Is it a 15-yard penalty? I would think that's a personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Yeah. That is the third flag for the Blue Devils, one on a kickoff. The spot will be from the 35 of the line of scrimmage. And so they are marked. You're right. We're going to take it down to the 20-yard line. And it'll be shy of a first down by three, but really a good offensive, a defensive series for the Blue Devils. No, it's not Second because, because remember, East. a couple weeks ago we had that same situation Second down here. Yeah. and three. 9.26 remaining here in the third quarter. Waynesboro. Says after it was a dead ball foul. After the play, so it's third down. Third down. Looked oh, like missed he, it. Yeah, it looked like he's trying to get a hand off off, and no one was there, and he gets thrown down at the line of scrimmage. That just wasn't a good developing play. Yeah. Why would you do I, I don't know. I mean, you try. sometimes you outthink yourself, Coach. Sometimes coaches outthink themselves. You, you got guys you put in the backfield for the first time, and you try to give them a football, and, and, and they're not, I don't know. So you fourth down here. Fourth down. They'll have three in the backfield. Cover. And, Cover. Straight back in the pocket, looking to pass, throwing for the corner way. He has been, oh, off the helmet, off the helmet of the intended receiver, Justin Marion. You won't see that too often, and it's an incomplete pass, and the Indians will turn it over and downs. Turn it over and downs, hit him in the helmet, and Hanson beat again on the corner route. I mean, you feel like they can run that with Peck or, or Justin anytime they want, and they, they're going to get that corner route on them. Well, Ringcastle gets, for the second time, the ball back on downs. Second consecutive time. They have bent, but they haven't broke defensively. Trips came out in that formation like they did to start the game. Trips to the right. And they give it to the fullback, Oberholzer, straight up the middle, a little bit to the right side. Picks up two or three on the play. I'll tell you, if you're Kurt Hansen, you're a smart kid, right? I mean, you're, you're smart, you're a good athlete. If you know you're beat on the corner, don't you cheat that way more? You know, okay, now this time you're going to beat me inside because I'm going to overplay the corner because you've gotten me three times, four times on it. Two passes fell incomplete, so play that corner route. Passionately spoken by Mike Monodoro. Two in the backfield, double wing, end around. And Sprague has a nice block. He's out to the 30. Stiff arms and out of bounds at the 37-yard line. That has been successful for the uh, Greencastle Blue Devils. And Sprague goes over 100 yards rushing with that one. Justin Marion came up to, to knock it inside, but he got kicked out block perfect. And Sprague read the block, cut inside of it, and then got to the edge. Perfect like you're supposed to run that play. So good job, Sam. Sam's done a nice job this year running the jet sweep and the counter crisscross. So, hey. What a year he's having. Yeah, he has, has had a great year. You're right. Myers under center, two in his backfield. Wide out and a slot to the near side, which is the short side of the field. They're going to give it to Hines. Hines has a little gap, grabs a hold of one of his runners and gets pulled up to the 45-yard line for a seven-yard pickup. You know, we saw we saw Sam play quarterback earlier this year because because Spencer was away, but, but we talked about it that night. 
Sam's a, 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 a much greater help to this team doing what he's doing in the position that he's doing it. So uh, he gives them another dimension that they wouldn't have if he were quarterback. If he was quarterbacking. Second and four for the Blue Devils. Hanson near us here. Spread out wide. Hines gets hit right away, and they'll give him a yard, a hard-earned yard up to the 45. I don't, I don't like it. They've run that play like three or four times tonight, and each time they've either gotten tackled for a loss or no gain because their D linemen do a nice job. When both guards pull, their defensive linemen get right in their hip pockets and come down the line. So I really don't like them pulling on the power sweep like that. Hartman comes in for Sprague in the offensive substitution. And he'll line up in that slot right. Stalaper, wide out, or the tight end to the left side. I would look for Oberholzer to get the ball, and that's who gets it. Still trying to barrel weight. Nice job, Waynesboro, on the defensive read on that one. They're going to give him, Mike, another yard. It's going to be a fourth and one. And they're going to punt away. My first reaction was, does it matter where Waynesboro gets the ball? But I... <laughs> So the first yeah, you want him to have to snap it about yeah. eight times, eight or nine times, but yeah. You want to try to give him a jump off sides here is what you'd like him to do. Yeah, long count and try to get that, get that to work. There's the snap, it's to him. Not a big rush, Hanson, plenty of time, gets the ball up high, and a fair catch, it's called, at a fumble! And Greencastle sort of like, it was a fair catch, let's just watch it, and, but... Uh, they were able to, Wade, able to jump back on the muffed punt, and it will be back down at the 18-yard line. So we're about halfway through this third quarter. No score. Both teams both teams had a possession. 6-11 to go, 14-14, and, and that's what we wanted to see. This is the game we want to see, man. A mistake in this, the second half is what's going to cost you the game. I believe so. Waynesboro has been able to move the ball, but they have been stopped twice. Wide out, way, way out to the other side near the 20-yard uh, marker. You might see him way out there. Greencastle gets on him. They got one in that slot way out there, too. Two in the backfield and a wide out here on our side. Hand off to Marion. Marion straight up the right side. Didn't break it. Greencastle stops it. Pick up a three yards on the play. Greencastle doing a much better job in the second half of, of playing that inside run, staying home, playing their containment, playing their gap. So credit them for that. Here we go. It's Ke or excuse me. Wirtz coming to this side with the ball, and he's going to be uh, near that first down, but it depends on the spot. I think it is a first down. I think you're probably right. Uh, no, it's not. Well, I think you're wrong. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Third down, one for the Indians. Third and one here. Two in the backfield now. As they get the signal in and they adjust their offense up. Taking a little bit of time. Well, you know, really no huddle, so it's not a lot of time. Straight up the middle. And I think, yep. once again, that's Wurtz. And Wurtz is going to get the first down as the ball is spotted at the 30. Brings up a first and ten for him. It keeps, it keeps the clock moving as well. Now they stopped it for the change. Now it goes in 5-10 to go. They're moving the ball. They're not, they haven't really thrown a whole lot, Mike. As I say that, they look back to throw. Federhoff, oh, that's a wounded duck. And Hansen gets it. Yes, intercept. Oh, oh, they're saying no. And they could be right. <laughs> They could be right. I don't know. I thought he might have had it, but. I thought he had it. And the other thing that really made me believe he had it was the guy marked it. He yeah. came down the sideline and marked it. If it would have been incomplete, he could have done that here. Yes. He didn't have to go down the side and mark it. So, uh, I think but that, Federoff gets hit by Stoliper just as he throws. So they needed something like that yep. here. Now they're going to go back. Oh, here's the fake. And Federoff trying to go around the outside. He gets uh, by one, gets by two, but doesn't get doesn't get too many yards on it, Mike. Only a yard upfield. Yeah, but you got to tackle. You'd much rather have those guys at third and 16 than third and eight. And it just get the momentum of getting a play like that back there. And that's just Scheller. Scheller just taking the wrong angle. He's taking the inside shoulder instead of the outside shoulder. Federoff back to the 20, setting up the screenplay. They complete it. 
to Wirtz, and Wirtz, oh, he breaks open now here to the outside, has some running room, gets the first down, crosses the 50, down to the 44-yard line. Yeah, you're starting to see a lot of Blue Devils laying down on the ground after plays now. Little twists and bumps, they're all running into each other, and they're just running out of sorts. I mean, they're, they're running all over the field in man coverage and then trying to run after people and they're running into each other. Wind on the clock. Federhoff to look to pass again. Fires for the corner. Oh, that's right. a great defensive play that time from Christman. That is a good play for Christman, but you don't like him standing over top of it. You like him to jump up and get jump back up, get lined away. up. Pass was intended for Devin Marion, and it falls incomplete. Second and ten now. Short pass and over the corner, 10 yard pickup. And just enough for a first down as they get the balls ball into the hand Charlie of Patterson, Charlie Patterson, the 195 pound 6'3 junior. Now just, they're going to call it short of first down. Yeah, short of the first down on the little pop pass to the tight end. Works the workhorse at the short distance and he gets the first down and two more. Well, Green Castle having a tough night. They're beating each other up as well as getting hit by Waynesboro. First and ten. And now this is Waynesboro taking time off the clock. Marion, the ball carrier, doesn't get a lot of yards. Gets three yards on it, but again, he wanted to go the outside. Blue Devils cut off the end, cut that yep. off, forced him up the middle where there were some people there to make it stop. Folks to help out. That's what you want. Everybody get in a gap and help. That should be a second down, right? Should be. The 11th play of the series here. Federhoff play action and throws it away as it was intended for Peck, but threw it outside. And Kurt's still way inside on that. If he catches that, I think he can get up the sideline. You gotta, you gotta start overcompensating a little bit to that outside because he's gonna get you again. Words comes out of the ball game. Clock is stopped after the incomplete pass. Third down, Indians. Third down, Indians. They got 12 out there. Nope. Procedure. Illegal procedure. I, I don't know why they call that. Well, they got, if you got a guy down and he gets back up out of his stance, it's legal. But as soon as he puts his hand on the ground, he's got to stay there. Okay. I'm not saying that's what happened. I just know sometimes that's the call. That's the call. A lineman gets down and then somebody says something and he stands up and that's penalty. Third down and 12 now. That helps the Blue Devils a little bit. Makes it a little long, longer situation. Federhoff way back drop, throws out here and overthrows again for the intended receiver, Patterson. So really, Federhoff struggling here. He's thrown four not so good passes in this series. Yeah, he got hit. He got hit earlier in the series, remember? Yeah, he and, did. And all of a sudden, you get hit a little bit. You start rushing some of your throws. You don't feel as comfortable back there. Uh, again, this one, they put four receivers to the short side of the field and then they came back over here. Flag on the play. It looks to be against Waynesboro again as they, uh, let's hear the call. Holding against the Indians. Declined it. Declined it. Wow. To keep the fourth down. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This would have been a tough decision for me if I were on that sideline. Yep. Fourth down. They call a timeout. And they'll take their first time out of the second half at the 3.05 mark here. As they take a timeout, we'll do likewise right here on the FNM Sports Network on midpenbroadcastingtop.com and gametimepa.com. Football season is here and Klein Tours has your ticket and bus transportation to NFL action. We have trips to all Baltimore Ravens home games. Join Klein Tours as we travel to Miami to watch the Ravens play the Dolphins December 6th through 9th. We have your ticket and transportation to see the Washington Redskins. Trips to New York City, Atlantic City, multi-day tours and more. Klein Tours, the Tri-State's number one tour and travel agency. Visit us online at KleinTours.com or phone 717-597-5997. This 
is Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils football on midpenbroadcasting.com. Fourth, fourth and 12 for the Indians. They're going for it. Not surprising to us. Federhoff straight back in the pocket looking to pass. Long pass down this way. Oh, he threw the man out of and they make the catch down at the 10. That is Wurtz with the catch. I'm not sure that's legal. I don't think that is legal. He threw him out. He threw him down. Yeah, Sam was in good position. Wurtz got his hands on his shoulder and pushed him. And I, I, uh, uh, well, uh, I might have taken the penalty, I think. Hindsight's 20 20. 20 20, yep. But, but, yeah. Anyway, first down know, on, the yeah. pay, on the play. That's terrible. Federhoff. Up under center, first time we've seen that. Pitch back out here to Marion and breaks the tackle, but he gets knocked down, and it's a first and goal situation for the Indians. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed we didn't get an interference called down there. You can't, you can't push the guy past you and then come back and catch the ball. So, I'm not sure where he was looking, the official. However. Yep, you got to get by it. Though, you got to right? go. Yep. Can. By the way, final score from uh, were they at ship or JB? At JB. At JB. The Rockets pull the upset, 14 nothing. And Marion trying to make something out of nothing, he gets stopped again. Boy, I tell you, he had a great first half, but the Blue Devils have his number here in the second half. I got to tell you that Gary Klein and I both picked JB to win that game tonight, and not because Andy Soner was sitting next to us. Yeah, right. <laughs> you want me to believe that? <laughs> yeah. I, if you say so, I, I certainly. Third down. Federhoff now going to the pass. Flushed out of the pocket, rolling this way. Stoliver can't get him, and neither can. Uh oh. No, oh, that, that official calls the. He was going to stop the clock, but he called the touchdown. Federhoff on the run from the outside, and it is a touchdown for the Indians from the 21 yard line. So Federhoff gets his hands on his third touchdown yeah you 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 run off in man you gotta be and then when he comes to the edge you can't attack him you gotta flatten out down the line and keep him wide as soon as you attack he beats you to the edge Cummings on a bad snap and this one may oh just barely makes it in wow great job by Peck to pick up the ball and get to the extra point and that extra point brought to you by Remax Premier Executives of State Line Lowe's Bear Agent 717-597-2777 21-14 Indians lead 139 left in the third quarter on the Evan M Trust Sports Network on midpenbroadcasting.com and gametimepa.com Have heating or air conditioning needs? Look no further than Lecron's Comfort Solutions. We service all brands. Heat pumps, humidifiers, system replacements, gas, oil, electric heat, and ductless systems. Lecron's Comfort Solutions is your authorized train dealer. Call Corey at 717-597-3768 for a free estimate. We are licensed and insured. Lecron's Comfort Solutions. Local company, local name. Serving Greencastle and all of Franklin County with professional service and installation. Live and local. This is MidPenBroadcasting.com. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if they try some trickery here on the kickoff. That, by the way, the longest drive we have seen this year. Mike, that went 15 plays, not in yardage, but in plays, as the ball is filled at the 20-yard line by the Blue Devils. They bring it up and get it up to the 35-yard line, and that's where they'll start. Decent field position here in a, a, a drive they really need to get into the end zone with. Yeah, they're going to have to get they're going to have to get some field position here, or at least flip the field. Worst case scenario, if they don't get first downs, they flip the field here. But 132 to go in the third quarter, down by seven. And man, that 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 drive was just 15 plays. They had some. They got penalties. They got help along the way. Yeah. Uh, but they didn't make the plays they needed to make. No, they didn't. In fact, it ended up being 82 yards on the drive total. As they do the crisscross again, but somehow there's a whole bunch of white jerseys there at that time, and Sam had no room to run. You feel a little shift in momentum right now, right? You got yep, that side of the field going crazy over there. The, the, the bleachers are loud. They're nuts. They're excited. They start to get a little bit of energy, a little enthusiasm. Sometimes you play a little better with it. Well, I, I, I don't think so sometimes. I think most of the time you play a little bit better with it. Now the Blue Devils need to get that momentum back right now. Two in the backfield. 
Wing to the left, wide out to the right. Myers rolls to the right, looks across field, throws up here for Sprague, overthrown and tipped away. It falls incomplete. Yeah, don't like don't don't like that late that late across the middle with some coverage okay. on it because it can be tipped like that. Uh, that one you got to tuck it and get up the field if everybody's covered. You know that I mean that, that's what you like out of a wing T quarterback is that when you get out on that edge you can tuck it and get up the field and and Spencer not not as gifted with his feet, gifted with his arm. He's he's true. You know he's one of those true quarterbacks. He looks he to is. throw. He looks to throw. He you does. Know, wing T guys, wing T coaches like the guys that look to run. Look to run a little bit. Same alignment as last time, bringing Sprague in motion, trying to go around the outside. They've got the corner, but Sprague cuts back up the middle, has a nice little run to the 40-yard line. And Waynesboro Wayne, happy with Wayne, that, Wayne, limited Wayne. to just five yards. And that brings up the punting situation, a three and out for the Blue Devils. Yeah, not what you wanted if you're the Blue Devils here. You wanted to at least take this into the fourth quarter. You still might, probably won't be able to, uh, but you didn't want to give them the ball back right now with the crazy momentum they have. Nope. Hansen at his own 27-yard line, awaiting the snap. It's to him. Not a heavy rush. And he gets one off. Going to let it roll, and it takes a blue devil roll down to inside the 15, probably to about the 12-yard line. Great punt. The 12-yard line from the 36. Let's do some quick math on that one. 14 and uh, 30 is... That is quick. <laughs> about a 50-yard punt. As long as it's 55 this year, he cranked one out last week. He, you should have seen that one last week. I mean, he got a hold of that one. It bounced only 55 total, and only about 10 of it on the ground. So I was, learned a couple of weeks ago that our own Pat Ruda kicked like a 90-yard punt at Shepard one time. Well, you know, and I, we'll talk a little bit about that. He's a scoreboard operator that you were yelling at just a little bit ago. <laughs> you sound like Peyton Manning there for a while. Works with a nice run. Come on, everybody runs past him. And one man to get him. And finally does after he crossed the 50-yard line. Thank you, Clayton Hartman, for making that stop. Quarter. And that is the end of the fourth or third quarter. We'll make it that quick. And the Indians lead this one at Kelly Field, 21-14. We'll be right back on the f and Trust Sports Network on midpenbroadcasting.com and gametimepa.com. That is the end of the third quarter of play. It's home equity season at f and Trust. The best time of year to rake in big savings with some of the best rates around on a home equity loan or line of credit. To rake in your savings during home equity season, visit fmtrustonline.com. Equal housing lender. There's nothing like being at the game. The excitement, the fun, the food, and all the waste. Whether it's popcorn boxes, hot dog wrappers, or this soda cup. Big games generate tons of waste. That's why waste management is helping stadiums and businesses reduce waste altogether through recycling and organic composting. To learn more, talk to your local waste management representative or visit thinkgreen.com. Jump top. We talk high school football every Thursday night at 7.30 on midpenbroadcasting.com. Buddy, you're a boy, make a big noise, playing in the street, gonna be 12 minutes, 12 minutes left in this one in the final and fourth quarter, Greencastle, Waynesboro. It is a 21-14 lead by the Indians, as the Indians have the football in excellent field position. Inside Blue Devil territory at the 45. Federhoff straight back to pass. Fires downfield and overthrows his intended receiver. That time, once again, it was Matt Peck. And Federhoff just too much time, Greg. Too much time, yep. Too much time. He's standing back there about eight yards behind center, and he could throw. He could have picked it up, thrown it back, and threw it again. <laughs> That's a lot of time. But he had that much. Yeah, he did. Hurry up offense. That is the style of Waynesboro. No huddle offense. Not necessarily hurry up. Ran 15 plays last drive to get one. This time they go to the fullback straight up the middle. And he picks up about two yards on the carry. I'm not even sure who that was. That appears to be a different runner. That, yeah, it is. This time it is Adrian Smith. Aiden Smith pick up a two. Third down and eight. 
Iso back in the backfield, straight back in the pocket, looking to throw again. Has some time, a little pressure that time. Oh, great one-hand catch by Marion as he gets the first down as he's down to the 30-yard line. Waynesboro doing a nice job spreading the ball around. Again, too much time sitting back there. You got to get somebody off the field. I think Greencastle dog tired, yeah. dog tired running around, and and they are chop blocking. But you got, I mean, there's a technique for that. You got to get your hands on, and you got to, you know, you got to push and helmet to the side and go. Three in the backfield for the Indians. They're going to give it to the first man through, who that once again is Smith. Smith again with just a two-yard pickup, but that sets them up a little bit when they do that. Second and nine, 10.53. Federhoff, time, throws, no one guarding the individual, and it is a touchdown, Waynesboro, and that may seal the deal here in this one as Cameron Keck is wide open for the TD. Cameron Keck wide open trying to cover man out there. He got outside of that, and no one picked him up, and... Wow, and that's not that's not what you wanted to see here. No, it wasn't. It was about a 30-yard pass, the third touchdown pass of the game for Connor Federhoff. That will add to his total of 17. And we talked about the amount of picks that hasn't happened. It did appear to be one, but it was called incomplete. Extra point is good, and that extra point brought to you by. Remax Premier Executives, the state line, Lois Bear agent, phone 597-2777. 10.38 up on the board, fourth quarter, 28-14, Indians leave. We'll be right back. It's home equity season at FM Trust. The best time of year to rake in big savings with some of the best rates around on a home equity loan or line of credit. To rake in your savings during home equity season, visit fmtrustonline.com. Equal housing lender. We talk high school football every Thursday night at 7.30 on MidPenBroadcasting.com. Eighty-seven yard drive on a mere six plays. Capped off by the pass from Federhoff to Keck, not to be confused with Peck. And the extra point is good, and it's a two-score game right now with 10.38 left to go. And really, that's not how the Blue Devil offense operates, quick strike scores. So we'll see what they can do here. Far from being over, just uh, that was a tough one for the Blue Devils to give up. Kickoff coming, coming set to do so. And it is, he called a fair catch, yes, so it is at the 45. It was an onside attempt or a bad kick? I think it was an onside attempt. Yeah, I think so, too. And they're aggressive. I mean, they come after you. They they, they make some calls that you shake your head about, and they come after it. And, yep. and maybe right there is one of those calls that you shake your head about because, uh, you know, you don't want to give – you're being a team by two scores. You don't want to give them any momentum no. in this thing, but instead you give them the ball at midfield, and, and you've had trouble except for right before the quarter. You had trouble stopping them all night, so I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's not, I don't think it's smart football. Sideline infraction penalty to call against <laughs> Waynesboro. Waynesboro got a sideline infraction. It means they're stepping over the white line. Yeah, that time they, well, they had a warning earlier, so this will pick that up, and they're giving, they're giving Blue Devils some opportunities. Yeah, they, all night they've gotten they some opportunities out of it. And and that's five-yard penalty, and first and five, just inside the 50 play. in Waynesboro territory now. So excellent field position for the Blue Devils. If they can get down and score in a hurry, stop Waynesboro one time, they have a shot at this. Myers under center. Sprague and the jet sweep, or rather, they, he goes in motion and they give it to Oberholzer. Oberholzer gets two yards oh, before on the spot here. to the 48-yard line. Brings up a nice second and three there. Yes, so it does. Find your way. Greencastle will finish out the season at Shippensburg next week. Shippensburg has effectively now dropped out of the race uh, for the number one position in the Colonial League. But Waynesboro's still in it. 
Waynesboro is, but Shippensburg has dropped right, out. Right, but already. Waynesboro gets a win here tonight. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and they it's have a possibility big... they, they win the conference. Well, they'll tie with East Bensboro because the, if they beat Big Spring next week, which is all probability, you would think that they would. Overhalser again, rumbles up over the first down, up over the 45, 44-yard line is the spot. And your Greencastle here, and I know we talk about it like that. It's the one thing about the wing T offense. It can you can score quickly at times, but right here you'd like to speed up a little bit yeah. what you do. In and out of the huddles a little quicker. Uh, you need a score here, and it has to come rather quickly. Yeah, and you know the other part of that is we mentioned they're tired. Because a lot of the guys are going both ways, offense and defense. Crisscross, and they read it again. What was big plays for Sam Sprague in the first half is not going to happen here in the second half. Yeah, Waynesboro just selling out right now. They're just saying, okay, we're going we're gonna to stop it because we're going to send people in the middle of the field. And the one thing you can't run when you have penetration is the counter crisscross or the guard trap. And they've done a nice job second half. So basically they just said, we're going to send some people in the middle because you're not hurting us anywhere else. No. no and, and that's a play that takes a little while to develop. And so, as you're right, if you get any penetration at all, clock at nine minutes here. Sprague will get it this time, trying to go to the right side. And it is uh, Marion who makes the shoestring tackle. And, it, again, they adjusted that play also at halftime. Yep, and they're sitting – they're doing what they need to do. Now, Greencastle at this point has got to, got to spread the field out a little bit too. They, they've got very conservative in the last – probably in their last eight or nine plays, incredibly conservative in this situation. And you'd like to see Spencer, you know, they took some shots early with Spencer throwing the ball down the field. You're down by two scores. You'd like to see him take some shots here. Uh, if my records are, are correct, and I'm sure they aren't, I only have him throwing once here in the second half. And this time, steps up in the pocket, decides to take the run himself, and gets down to the 40-yard line. Fourth down coming up with five, six yards to go. Hey, you don't, you you got to go. I think you got to. I think you're in a situation where you want to go for it here because I don't think it matters if you give it to him on the 40 or the 20. It doesn't. It doesn't. That's why I said that once before. I you think, did say it once I, before. Yeah, and, and uh, for once I was right. Doesn't happen often, but we'll take it when it does. Fourth and a long five, maybe six, and Blue Devils are going to go for it here in this situation. Clock running at 7:45. Sprague in the slot to the left. Hansen out to the wide side here or the near side play action fake comes out throwing completes it to Oberhalser Oberhalser gets the first down and a few yards on that uh, waggle play as you call it to the 29 yard line and a Blue Devil first down slip the fullback out into the flat he's tough to cover that is tough to cover it what you want to hope to do is you let him catch it and tackle him and and in that case they did they caught it tackled him but it was enough for the first down first and ten for the Blue Devils now, clock at the 7.30 mark. Each play taking about a minute, so or a little less than a minute, I should say. But nevertheless, clock not their friend right now as they're trailed by two scores, 28 to 14. Fake throw, has Hanson up. Oh, great defensive effort by Wurtz. I mean, great defensive okay, effort by Wurtz. Yeah, and it's, you know, he got the little double move. He pump faked, and then he went up the sideline and tried to drop it in there and Wirtz got his hand on it and knocked it away so I mean give Waynesboro credit they they have played well tonight yes they have and they've made almost every play they had to make the only play that maybe they didn't make was the one that hit Justin in the head yeah that's true this wouldn't have been this would be a 35-14 game of course you go back to Wooda Shooter Hoodas uh Greencastle should have scored two other touchdowns this is Overhalser grinding it out, holding on to the football and dragging people with him down inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Yeah, and you wanted to take – you on this drive, you're looking at maybe four minutes at the most to get into the end zone here. And if you start going into five and six minutes, you're limiting your opportunities after that. So it's, it's something that's – you don't want to be in hurry-up offense, but you want to be in, in let's pick it up pace Let's pick mode. it up offense, yeah. Third and five now for the Blue Devils. You see the ball. They're, they're working from the left hash mark. Ball is just inside the 25-yard line in Waynesboro territory. Hines trying to break something out the middle, and he goes nowhere. Nowhere. And another stop by Waynesboro, bringing up another fourth down situation for the Blue Devils. They went last time. Obviously, they're in four down territory. They'll go again this time. Four down territory, and... 
I just don't, I, I don't like the way they kind of they tightened up the game in the second half. They kind of they kind of tightened up what they were doing, and I don't know. I like the way that, that like we said, the first quarter, the way they were moving the football and, and boom, and doing all the different things, the different formations, different – all that stuff. And then it seems like second half here, they've, they've gone back into the old just, this is who we are. Yeah. Overhaul serve back in the backfield. Sprague wide out to the right side. Play action again. Spencer rolling that way on a design quarterback boot. He gets a couple yards. First down. First down. Well, they might have to spot that one. Oh, no, they already gave it to him? Yeah, he's, he, okay. was, he was up over the 19, Whew. maybe down. He might be all the way down to the 18. All the way down to the 18. That's where the ball will be spot first and 10, Blue Devil. Under six to go here in the fourth quarter, 28-14. Indians on top of this one, scoring twice here in the second half. It was not at 14 all at halftime. Down to 535 left. Play action again. Fires for over, or excuse me, Stoliber, who's down at the two-yard line. Stoliber down at the two, makes a nice catch. That's a good throw, nice route. And then get lined up, get lined up. You got 524. They're going to set the clock as soon as the, as soon as as the goes, stick yeah. sits down. Let's go. Well, not as you would want, Mike, but nevertheless, they're out. Two in the backfield from the two-yard line. We're going to give it to Oberholzer. He's not going to get in, so they're going to have to take another play. Ooh. I would, yeah. I would not run the quarterback keep down here. No, it didn't work last time. I wouldn't. Uh, and whether it's he gets out of there too fast, thinking he's got to go somewhere, I'd, I'd make him give it to somebody because tw that last series down there, he did fumble it twice. Yes, he did. He did. So you'd be like, eh, eh. Two yard. <laughs> Give it two, to somebody else. Two yard line. Blue Devils second and goal. Clock under five now. 4:41. So uh, you know if they score here, they got to come back with an onside kick. Try to get the ball back. And they're going to give it to Overhaul. So there is no room there. They have stacked that up. They're going to have to go around the outside. 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 I, I mean, you're good with songs. Yeah, I, mean, I you know. know stuff. I think that's a, a, a two little really something go around the outside. Around the outside, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Third down and two. 4-12. And the clock will go to four minutes here by the oh, end of the play. You're killing me with the clock, Greg. You're killing me. I got to give you the time. 28-14. Blue Devils knocking on the door. Sprague on the end of round. He gets it. And nope. Blue Devils do not get in. What a defensive stand by the Waynesboro Indians on this one. Fourth down now. Now you move it back. Fourth and whatever. Fourth and eight. Well, you give them credit. You gave them credit. You said they played a great game, Waynesboro, and that was just, this has been a great defensive stand from them. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I think Greencastle was afraid to make a mistake down here. And you got to play, you know, wiffle balls to the wall down here. Yep. Myers up under center. Everybody in tight. One back in the backfield. That is Oberholzer. Spray comes in motion. Going to fake him and roll to the right. Spencer now sees some room. He tries to get up. And nope. he's not going to get in. One yard nope. shy of a touchdown. And the ball goes back to the Waynesboro Indians with them leading by 14 points. And that's not a bad play call. That's a good call on second down down there. That's a good call. Get him out on that corner. If there's no one's open, tuck it and see if you can sneak it in there. I, I don't mind that call at all. Now, that was a good call. But it would have been better on second down down there doing that kind of thing. But here we go. That's, is it a timeout or what? It, the ball's at the half-yard line. I don't know if you can see that on your video screen or not. They huddling on your side of the field? And the coach is in the huddle? Yeah, I'm not, you know, they've already flagged him for that once. Yeah. It's a big stop here for Greencastle. Uh, there's Something. a time. There's a delay that's of game. delay of game, right? That has to be delay of game. Well, that's going to be. I don't even know if you can move it back half the distance to the goal line. You, you can know? pretend. Yeah. Uh, Pick it up, move it a little bit. There because it's so, I mean, 
That or it's, you know, the ball's on the line, so it's a safety, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it crossed the plane. Yeah. The ball well, crossed, crossed the, the plane. plane. It would be nice if uh, a oh, safety Oh, they're, they're running a guy out there now. That's... They broke, well, did they, they break They up? did not break any huddles. They no. just didn't have 11. Now they got 11. You can play with 10. Yeah, you could can. have been set, though. And they're going to hit Peck oh, out here. Anson doesn't get it. Peck with a little dance move. Breaks one, breaks two. And finally, Sam runs him out of bounds. Sprague at the 33-yard line. But, boy, that got him out of problems, didn't it? It sure did get him out of problems. And that's just not coming up making the tackle there. It's got to be, you know, if they're going to make that completion for the first time, you still got to be chest on chest. You got to run through the man. Run through his chest. You can't nose dive at his feet. Even if you just wrap him up, hold him until someone gets there. Waynesboro with the football. With the clock stopped at 2.52 as the runner went out of bounds. Peck did. Moves on the snap. Play action. A little read there. And now Ryder penetrates and gets the stop behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Bobby Ryder makes a good play there. Would have. Would have liked more of those in the first and second quarter. Second and 15. Do you know if you're if you're a no huddle offense, how you do clock management, slowing it down? <laughs> Marion, the ball carrier, not going to get a lot to the 29 yard line. Blue Devils will stop the clock there with 2:20 left as they take their first time out of the. Now, actually, the ball game, but more importantly here of the second half, and that with 2.20 to go. So you got 2.20 to go. They take a timeout. It's third and about 14, and, and this is a big play because here, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to play it out to you. Okay. They're not going to pick up the first down here, but they're also going to fake punt or, <laughs> or go for it on fourth down because they're up two scores. Right. So they don't care if you score one here. And that's been their MO all year. They do those kinds of things. So it's not going to surprise me here if they fake punt or go for it on fourth down if they don't get it on third. So you, you got to defend two downs. You got to suck it up. I mean, I'm sure Coach Tennis has told him, get off the ball, get up the field, and, and make some plays here. But And you got to tackle somebody. Yeah. Yeah, you got to make some tackles. I mean, that's the thing. As we saw this a couple years ago, like when Township played Greencastle, and Chambersburg, when they were good in space, Greencastle could play with them, and, and we're seeing that tonight. You always you always mention about playing out in space, and that that is the difficulty. Iso back in the backfield. He's going to look to pass, and there is a flag on the play. That has to be a motion penalty, I would assume, because it stopped the ball. Yeah, offsides is the call. Penalty flag on the play, dead ball. Foul well, call one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight flags against Waynesboro. Nine if you count the, the holding that was declined. And Blue Devils committing only three so far here. One was a kick uh, on the kickoff as it rolled out of bounds. Only one motion penalty. Iso back two left, two right. Federoff still looking to pass the ball. Fires downfield. And completed. Nope. Nope, the ball bounces out. I thought he had it to Peck at the 45. So here comes that fourth down situation you talked about. That stops the clock. I don't see any substitutions. Here comes one guy. Yeah, I, I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna punt. So they give the ball back here. Two left or two. Well, it's a change in their alignment now they're down the looks like a punting formation maybe quick kick it fake punt firing downfield and stop shy of a first down even okay. though it was completed <laughs> to um, Wirtz and Blue Devils have it at the 40 well the penalties help on that one and it'll go back to the Blue Devils with 202 to go you hear the Waynesboro chant. You may not be able to pick it up, but they're chanting it's all over as they enjoy a two-score lead, 28-14, with just two minutes and two seconds left. Blue Devils need a quick score. And 12, I mean a and really 12 years of frustration coming out, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, you knew it was going to be tough. Waynesboro so much improved. And Greencastle with an injury list that uh, 
is really uh, growing each and every day. But give Waynesboro credit. They have played well in this one. Meyer's going to look to pass, setting up a little screen to Votrell. Votrell makes the catch, but it's just at the line of scrimmage. It goes nowhere. And Waynesboro, again, did a great job on that. Votrell snuck out. So did 11. He snuck out right with him and stayed beside him. And luckily, it wasn't picked off. Greencastle goes from the shotgun and their hurry-up offense. Looking to throw downfield. And here's the pass, and incomplete. Just a, a hair past Sam Sprague, and it falls incomplete. And Waynesboro, do, again, doing a nice job here, situational football. Defensively, they're laying everybody back down, knowing that you have to go deep here or try to get down the field. So uh, they're not playing any tight coverage, sitting back, waiting for the ball to be thrown in the air, making a play on it. So good job by the Indians tonight. They've, they've done the thing. I think the turnovers killed Greencastle in this game. And, maybe, and probably the difference in the game. Well, no doubt about it. Yeah. The turnovers are a difference in this game. Always a, always a factor. Spencer under center, rolls to the right, going to get hit from behind, throws downfield, and cannot hold on to it is uh, Silva. Nick Silva. Just great defensive coverage. Clock at 126 on the stop clock, fourth down situation. Blue Devils obviously will try it again. To get something going here, get a first down, keep the ball back. Uh, you got to get I'll tell you what's going to happen now. I'm from, what's that called? Clairvoyant or yeah. whatever. They don't get this They don't get this first down. Waynesboro's going to score. Claire who? Somebody. <laughs> Live down the street. Yeah. Waynesboro's going to try to score. I guarantee it. Myers awaiting the snap. They're rushing everybody. Throwing downfield. Intercepted at the 16-yard line. And that interception is made by Nicholas Wade. Wade still going. There is a flag on the play, and Wade falls down at the 34-yard line, but this one is over. I don't I don't know what the call was. There's two flags down on the field. I don't know what the call is either, if it's another one of those peel-back blocks. Yep, it is. Or a block in the back over there. Still Waysboro's football. It'll just have to come back a little way. Well, they are the, you know, that will be an interception going against uh, Spencer, but his second one of those types, when you're looking to score late in the ball game, you're throwing it up and trying to make something happen. Those INTs will occur. I'm waiting to see what uh, transpires here. Wow, it all started out so well for the Blue Devils in that opening drive. Mike, they, they were able to take it 68 yards in seven plays and the pass play to Stolver from Myers, and things looked pretty good for the Blue Devils. But then, you know, it was, the, uh, it, even though they came back with a big play and Greencastle had the interception and then uh, couldn't get it in when they were down to the two, all those things hurt them at that point in time. Ways were at 110 to go. Not going to take a knee here. No, they're going to run the uh, read option. Now, the danger here is always the case is that you get hurt. Someone gets hurt. They're going to put, spot the ball at the 48. They play Big Spring next week, which should be a victory for them. And, a, and possibly, the, it, if luck goes their way, a district playoff slot. Blue Devils will fall to, well, that wasn't the design play. They had that mixed up. Everybody trying to chase Federhoff, and then he is thrown down by Oberholzer back at the 36-yard line. 37 seconds to go. Brings One up a big third down play. Greencastle now here's the out question. of timeouts. Here's the question. Can the Blue Devils get in at 7-3? and three? I think they can. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think they can. I think if they can beat Ship, I think Ship's had a good enough record this year that I think they could boost them a little bit. Give some points. I think 7-3. and three. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I really believe that 7-3 and three gets you into District 3. They call a timeout. Waynesboro did. They called a timeout with 14.3 seconds left. Question that call. Could you just take a knee and call the game over? Yeah, you could have. Yeah, okay. You could have. I was just asking. I was just asking, yeah. Greencastle, is that true? Greencastle has two timeouts left on the board? Yep. And they didn't use them under a minute, so. Uh, no. And we'll see why Waynesboro used the timeout here. Greencastle pretty much conceded under a minute that they weren't going to be able to score two times. Waynesboro takes the timeout. And back ready to go. Greencastle still using the clock. 14 seconds to go in this game. Probably the last play of the game right here. And as you said, 12 years of frustration 
going down here for Waynesport as they're able to pick up a win over the Blue Devils and most likely they did take the knee and that is the ball game as they run out the clock. Waynesboro Indians, I wouldn't call it an upset. I'd call it a big win though. They win this one 28 to 14 over the Blue Devils here tonight. We'll be back with the post game show on the FNM Trust Sports Network on midpenbroadcasting.com and gametimepa.com. It's home equity season at FNM Trust. The best time of year to rake in big savings with some of the best rates around on a home equity loan or line of credit. To rake in your savings during home equity season, visit fmtrustonline.com. Equal housing lender. Hey, insurance companies that want to spend a gazillion dollars on funny TV ads can go right ahead. As long as it's not my money paying for it. For seriously good auto, home, business, or life insurance, I go to Erie Insurance where a great price is just the start. You get unbelievable service, independent agents you can really trust, and superior products. But don't just take it from me. Talk to your local Erie agent. Call Antrim Insurance. In Greencastle, call 593-0500. In Waynesboro, call 762-4565. Have heating or air conditioning needs? Look no further than Lecron's Comfort Solutions. We service all brands, heat pumps, humidifiers, system replacements, gas, oil, electric heat, and ductless systems. Lecron's Comfort Solutions is your authorized train dealer. Call Corey at 717-597-3768 for a free estimate. We are licensed and insured. Lecron's Comfort Solutions. Local company, local name, serving Greencastle and all of Franklin County with professional service and installation. Del Martin Incorporated, a full-service advertising agency, has been serving the tri-state area for 35 years. We specialize in screen printing and embroidered clothing. Del Martin Incorporated supplies a full range of brand name uniforms for athletic, work and medical applications and a full line of advertising essentials. We have an in-house artist ready to put your ideas to work for you. T-shirts for schools, clubs, churches, and events. Del Martin Incorporated, 21 Sarah Susan Lane, Greencastle. Phone 717-597-5751 or online at delprint.com. Every day, Fast Signs helps businesses with their visual communications. We ask the right questions, recommend smart solutions, and help you build your business. At Fast Signs, we're innovators, planners, and designers, and we're more than ready to help. Contact Fast Signs today. Visit www.fastsides.com or visit us at our Greencastle and York locations. Live and local. This is midpenbroadcasting.com. Okay. Tonight's post-game <laughs> show is brought to you by Antrim Insurance, your local area insurance agent serving Greencastle, Waynesboro, Chambersburg, Mercersburg, and surrounding areas. Antrim Insurance, 169 South Antrimway, Greencastle, and 1685 East Main Street in Waynesboro. Well, after week four or five of the, of the season... I'm going to call it week four, one, two, three, four. The Waynesboro Indians look to be in big, big trouble. They had beaten Kennerdale but lost three in a row, Biglerville, Gettysburg, and Cedarcliff. But since that time, they did beat Northern. Then Shippensburg upset them 18-12. to 12. But since that, they turned things around. Give them credit. After scoring 54 against East Pensboro, 54 against James Buchanan, they come in here tonight, get 28 on the board, and pick up a 28-14 to 14 win. Uh, a, a, a great game from them. The Blue Devils, of course, they, they had their problems. The three turnovers, more, more or less the two turnovers, sort of did them in also. Yeah, turnovers were a killer here tonight. And, and maybe the second half, they got a little conservative with their play call in the second half and took – Took way too much time at the end of that, at the beginning of that fourth quarter, to try to get in a scoring position, and and they weren't able to do it. And and give Waynesboro credit, I think they wore down this Greencastle defense. Uh, they were up and up and down the field on the ball. They 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 didn't make plays. They made big play they after made big, big plays, play yeah. after big. I mean, when you go into games uh, as a coach, a lot of times you tell your kids, hey, look, we got to limit. You know, we don't want to make let them get plays over 15 yards. You know, we got to limit the plays they make over 15 yards. Wow. I, I don't know. I mean, tonight, I don't know how many plays were 15 yards, but it seemed like every one of them. 
It, it did. You know, they, they ran 36 plays in the second half, and uh, we had told you that they ran 26 plays in the first half. So it was 50, 62 plays. They usually averaged between 80 and 90. Blue Devils were successful and able to do that. But, uh, you, you know, it was big play after big play for them. And Federoff had an outstanding night. He threw for three touchdown passes and ran for another one. And we knew that coming in that Connor was uh, – was going to be was all that he was cracked up to be. He had a lot of turnovers, or excuse me, a lot of interceptions. But that was understandable too. That was you know he was throwing the ball a lot in a in a fast fast type of a, a offense. But he played well tonight as he had to. Uh, by the way, you're taking a look now as uh, this is the uh, the extra point for the one thousand dollars that they did last year. And the person that uh, won the drawing has uh, elected Kurt Hansen to do the kicking, which yeah, I would too. I think it'd be, I think it'd still be interesting if, you know, one of us won, we had to do the kicking. But uh, if Hanson can put it through the uprights, it'll be $1,000 to some lucky person. Uh, but, do you think someone told Kurt if he misses it, we'll give you 250 <laughs> <laughs> So uh, they're going to do the snap and everything else. Blue Devils marching band will do their halftime show, their their show right after uh, this one. They have their their, their big game coming up their big Sunday coming up it is their national or their state tournament uh, by the way Greencastle girls soccer in the final four of the double uh, a girls soccer and here's the drum roll and everything else uh oh he missed that he missed it it looked good from here it's good <laughs> it's good, Greg. It's good. It's good. We're, we had a terrible angle. Up here. We, we, we did have a have terrible, terrible angle. angle. There wasn't an official. Oh, it looks like they're going to go get the ball and have them kick it again. Kick it again. It was a bad hold. Bad hold. Bad hold. Bad hold. Let's get back to the game real quick here. We'll wrap this one up as we've gone too far. Coming up this week, uh, you're going to do chalk talk at. Uh, 7.30? Uh, as a matter of fact, we are going to have Chalk Talk Thursday night at 7.30. I will not be in attendance only because it's trick-or-treat night, and my 12-year-old would be crushed if I wasn't home for probably one of his last trick-or-treat years. Yeah, you it know, is. A, so you dressing up or something? Uh, uh, no, just me. Okay. I might dress up as you. Well, either one would be scary, so <laughs> it would be appropriate. And then next week we're back up, up at Shippensburg as the season will come to an end for the Blue Devils. But I think you're right. I think a 7-3 and three record can squeeze them in into the 16th spot. Now, it may mean you're going to play Bishop McDevitt, though. Uh, at McDevitt. At McDevitt. Which, but I'd like to see that new place. I'd like to see the new place. You know, they've had a lot of trouble with lights up there. They can't get – they've had like three or four times lights have gone out, and they've had to play the game the next day. I think they got that fixed. But anyway – Waynesboro comes in here. They play a really, really good ball game. Got to give them credit for that. They did a lot of things well in this one, and they pick up the uh, – here – oh, no, he can't. It must be the hold. Got to be the hold. So, anyway, sounds like a song. <laughs> Got to be a hold, as you say. Anyway, Blue Devils and Waynesboro. Give Waynesboro credit on this one. Uh, tonight's postgame show has been brought to you by Antrim Insurance, your local area insurance agent serving Greencastle, Waynesboro, Chambersburg, Mercersburg, and surrounding areas. Antrim Insurance, 169 South Antrim Way, Greencastle, and 1685 East Main Street in Waynesboro. Tonight's game has been brought to you by f and Trust Mobile. Bank wherever you are with your smartphone. Transfer funds, pay bills, and more with the f and Trust Mobile app. Details at fnmtrustonline.com. Member FDIC, Waste Management, Environmentally Friendly Technologies, and Advanced Innovations. Remax Premier Executives Agent Lois Baer, Del Barton Incorporated, a full-service advertising agency serving the tri-state area for 35 years. Lecron Comfort Solutions, serving all of Franklin County with professional service and installation. Brothers Pizza, dine in, carry out, and deliver 50 Pine Drive, Greencastle. Antrim Insurance, your local area insurance agent. Klein's Tours, New York City, Atlantic City, and more. Visit Klein'sTours.net for a complete tour schedule. Tonight's game has been a production of MidPenBroadcasting.com. Tonight's camera operated by Steve Sibio. Join us next Friday night on MidPen Broadcasting and Game Time PM when Greencastle Antrim travels to Shippensburg Memorial Park to take on the Grey Greyhounds. Chambersburg finishes out the season as the Cumberland Valley Eagles comes to town. That broadcast begins at 6.30, while the Blue Devils broadcast will start at 6.45 p.m. Again, our final score tonight, the Waynesboro Indians 28, the Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils 14. For Mike Monadero, <laughs> Mike Monitor, what's your last name? Mike, for Mike, Marion, <laughs> Mike Marion Barry. <laughs> this is Greg Hoover. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>